Good morning, you're watching Sewing Street and my name's Debbie Shaw and those electric scissors are coming up later on this morning. i um, just been having a play with them, they're amazing. We're going to be here with you live for the next three hours and we've got lots of newness for you, we've got exclusive books, uh, we can make a quilt like this, we've got new bundles for you, we've got a new kit coming up in the next hour and then finally uh, we've got some of your favourite fabrics in the final hour as well. So this is what we have for you this morning. So book launch, sensational quilts for scrap lovers, do you know we've even got a bag of scraps for you, been selling already. Um, product launch at 8.30 this morning, it is the... <laughs> at 9 o'clock this morning, it's my reversible bag. Um, three options for you there. At 10 o'clock, we've got more bag making with fabric and inspiration. Uh, at 11 o'clock, then, then we're going to the repeats, so we're live until 11. Then we have sewing room tools at 11 o'clock this morning. And my beach hut hanger, which has actually sold out but the book that it came from <laughs> is still available. Um, if you want to have a look at all of the products that we have for you this morning, then do take a look on our website, which is sewingstreet.com. Um, it'll take you to a jewellery maker website, so don't be put off when you see jewellery maker. We're all the same company. You'll see a video, if you go there now, of me, uh, of, in fact, of this, and underneath the video are all of the products that we have for you in the next three hours. And of course, you can order those ahead if you, if you haven't got time to stay with us this morning. However, However, as you are up nice and bright and early this morning, as usual, we're going to bring you a special offer product. And today we're talking about a June Taylor basting spray. So basically at eight o'clock in the morning, we bring you an item at a reduced price for as long as we have the stock or for the rest of the day. Um, so we've taken two pounds off this basting spray. It's only 10 pounds and 49 pence. And it's a huge can. Let's just check how much is in there. Um, 10 ounces, 284 grams. It actually says on your screen and I didn't have read that. Um, so it's a big can. It's going to last you for a long, long time. Now your postage here is £3.95 and it says all day. So that isn't £3.95 we're going to charge you for every item you order all day. It's £3.95 for one item all day. So if you came back later on and thought, do you know, I want a book, I'd like a barley pop, please, or a Juki sewing machine, we don't charge you any more postage because you've already paid it once. So that's what the all day means. So once you've ordered your reduced price, um, basting spray, and then you can come back all the way through to midnight tonight and order anything you like from a packet of pins to a sewing machine or an overlocker and you won't be charged any extra postage. Now a basting spray, basting being the American term that we use for tacking. So basically this is um, spray pins. So instead of pinning your quilt layers together, it's called a quilt basting spray. But, but you know, your fabric the spray won't know what you're actually making. So if you're making a bag or something and you want to adhere the, um, some wadding to the fabric, your basting spray isn't going to go, oh, no, 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 I'm not working on that. I'm a quilt basting spray, don't you know? It's basically basting spray. And a basting spray will stick two pieces of fabric together temporarily, like this. So if I wanted to put a piece of applique onto the front of a piece of fabric, I can simply spray the back of the applique Keep this away from your sewing machine and in a well-ventilated room, as we are here, and plonk it down. Oh, it smells nice as well. I've actually used rather a lot on there because you can see it through. So just a, a light dusting of spray. It's not going to damage your fabric. It's not going to stain the fabric. It's not going to damage your sewing machine and it won't clog up your needle. But because it's a basting spray, you can simply peel that away and reposition it. So if oh, I haven't got that quite right, let me put it there then it'll stay in place. So it's great for applique. It's great for holding layers of fabric together. So instead of using your curved, I've got it all over me now, I sprayed far too much. Instead of using your curved um, safety pins, which are fine and they're on the website if that's what you prefer, um, use your spray between your layers of wadding if you're quilting and that's going to keep them all together while you're sewing. The spray will wash out afterwards but it's not going to damage. Eventually the stickiness will wear off anyhow. Um, instead of hand tacking your quilt then use your basting spray. It doesn't matter how large or how small your quilt is. If, you're, if you want to make something like a bag and you've got some wadding but you don't have fusible fleece like, like I like to use, then you can make your wadding fusible just by spraying one side with your basting spray. So that's going to hold your wadding in place. If you have a sew-in foam maybe, and you thought, oh, we should have bought that single-sided. 
fusible, then use your spray to hold it in place. There are so many uses for it. I'll tell you what else I like to use a basting spray for. And I've got a little bit of faux leather here. If I'm making um, a bag strap from this faux leather, which I use an awful lot because I love it, I'll just cut a little bit of this off. Off the tape. You can have a quick haircut with that, can you? Um, now with this fabric, I'm going to have bits of thread stuck to me all morning this morning because I'm very sticky now. Um, I would obviously cut that accurately, um, but to make a bag strap, I'd normally do that, press it, do that, press it. Can't press this, it's PU, and then fold in half and press again. So I could use my clips because I wouldn't pin this either, but you find that the fabric just wants to bounce back. It's not the easiest thing to actually put together. I must have something scrap, this will do just so I don't get spray all over the table. So I shan't do the whole thing, I'll do that end. But I find with the PU, if I spray just a little bit on the back there and then fold to the centre, it sticks it down. Whoops, should have put a bit more on. So it sticks it down and holds it there. And then I stick that down there. And then I can spray this side because you're not going to see that side and then fold it in half again. And then the whole thing is kind of stuck together while I sew it. So I don't have to worry about the clips. Don't get it on the outside of fabrics like this, but on the inside there, um, it's perfect to hold it together with. It's easy to use. You've got a big can and it smells quite, quite perfumey. It doesn't smell. I mean, don't, don't, don't go smelling glue. I'm not going to get into trouble for recommending that one. Um, but it does actually smell very nice as well. And it's very sticky, which is what we want. <laughs> Just not on your fingers. So a light spray would be ideal for you. Um, you can multi-order if you wish. Um, it's not just because we've got a special, it's not one per, because look, see, threads everywhere. Um, oh, I'm going to have to do something with that. <laughs> And maybe the uh, antibacterial stuff we have would do something for me. <laughs> I'm just going to be sticking to everything, aren't I? I was a sewing machines, wadding. <laughs> so £10.49 is your price. That's our early bird. Um, while we have the stock all throughout the day today, multi-order as many as you like. If you buy one and you pay you £3.95 and then think, you know, we should have bought two, you won't be charged another £3.95 when you come back and, and order more. <laughs> Thank you very much. Do. Thank you. Hopefully that will work. <laughs> Can't believe I did that. <laughs> I, I did do, um, uh, in another world, when I worked on a, another shopping channel, we were doing a fashion show. Um, I, I got glue. I got glue on my hands. I think I was doing a craft show the hour before and I got sticky glue on my hands. And we were going through this rail of clothing like this and I had a cami stuck to my hand and it was just... <laughs> It's a lovely cami. <laughs> Literally had to peel it off and half the skin came away. That's another story. Uh, basting spray, early bird special, £10.49. Order on 0800 001 4433 or you can go to our website which is sewingstreet.com. While you're on Tinternet, if you want, <laughs> it didn't quite work, um, if you want to send us a message, ask a question, share a photograph, just come and say good morning this morning. Our Facebook page. Uh, oh, we can message the studio. Um, studio at sewingstreet.com. So you can send us an email if you wish, or you can go to our Facebook page, um, which is Facebook. Uh, just go to Sewing Street TV. We do have two Facebook pages. One's the fans page, which is a group, and this one is the one that I'm on at the moment. So I should be able to uh, answer your questions. Um, just really quickly, um, Sarah emailed or messaged in yesterday. Um, I didn't pick up the message. It was it was one minute past eleven, and we we, we knock off at eleven, so I didn't quite pick it up. Um, but she was saying, would today's early bird be suitable for making the Maddie doll? Um, this was the early bird Osnabrück fabric from yesterday, and Sarah, I hope I hope you didn't order to make that because I wouldn't. It's a little bit too flecky for skin, so it's a rag doll basically. And I think it's a little bit of a, a, a too loose a weave. So I don't think it's flesh looking enough. Um, 
So no, I, I wouldn't for that one. So hopefully that's answered that one. You have to, have to bear with look, thread everywhere. You have to bear with me with Facebook because they've changed it, haven't they? Because they it, it doesn't update like it used to do. So I have to keep coming off it and refreshing it and coming back again. Um, oh, Jackie, that is lovely. Jackie made the bag yesterday. This is my reversible bag that we're doing in the next hour. I made one similar. It's actually a little bit smaller in one of the shows last week. And I thought, you know, we'll, we'll put all the fabric in the instructions together because it was so popular. Um, she said, I might try a purse next. Funny that, we're going to make a purse in the next hour. I uh, made one mistake which I can't see now, but I've only been sewing for a month. I don't think any, I'm not pointing it out, but I don't think anybody will notice that. I think you've done a really good job and I love your fabric as well. Morning Dawn. I'm so looking forward to the show. I bought fabric a couple of weeks ago and started the bag with the last show. Fabulous. So that's on Facebook. So if you want to come and message directly, I shall try and keep up with those. Okay. We've got something else new for you. And exclusive until next Monday. So at the moment you can't buy dynamic quilts from Simple Squares anywhere else. Sensational quilts for scrap lovers even. Using Simple Squares. <laughs> so this is uh, a book by um, Judy Gautier. It's £23.99 and this is a brilliant way of using up all of your leftover bits and bobs of fabric. But you know, leftover scraps, you don't imagine to create something so amazing as these. This is the quilt that we have hanging up on the bookshelf behind me. And so it's quite a size as well, because you don't have to make a huge quilt with every single one. Um, but constructing the quilt, so you've got um, all of your pattern ideas in here and different techniques. They're quite new. See, that's only squares. But it's really clever, isn't it? That's why I kept saying squares. Couldn't I just wanted to show you the squares one. <laughs> so that is squares and rectangles. See, really simple ideas. Oh, I like that. Sleepy tiny teepy town. I've not seen one like that before. What a clever idea. And the knit stitch. The fractured four patch. But again, only using very small bits of fabric. So if you're if you're a bit of a hoarder and you think I've got all of these scraps and I really don't know what to do with them, um, then this is the book for you. That's nice, isn't it? Aerial view. So how to make the blocks, how to cut the blocks. How did she do the circles? Oh, they're appliqued. Oh, that makes it easy. That's a good one if you're not very good on your points, isn't it? Just stick a few more dots over them. And how to make the wedges. And remember your learning techniques. So I think you're looking at these really big quilts, but um, that could be a table runner. I don't think you'd have to make up the whole thing. I think you could quite easily make smaller versions. Or if you do make the large quilt, then why not make a smaller one for a cushion cover, maybe? Um, where's the quilt behind me then? Oh, is that the teep That's the teepee one, isn't it? Is that not those are triangles? Let's have a look. That's that one. It's the one on the cover, isn't it? Um, let's go to the projects page. Let's see if we can find it. There we go. So it's it's that one, isn't it? The fractured four. Is it not that one? Precious metals. That one. It's it's all triangles. That's what was confusing me. All of these shapes are all in triangles. Lovely way of colouring up your scraps. So that's on page 56. And I think this is one of those, that's the one, um, one of those projects that, um, I mean, it's time consuming, isn't it? But we like something that takes a long time sometimes. Um, so this could be your project that, you know, you're going to do the weekends or maybe you're not back at work or allowed out at the moment. 
Um, <laughs> I just took my sticky fingers. You just know my fingers are going to go black by the end of the day, don't you? <laughs> They're going black now. Okay. Too too much too much glue on the fingers. Um, everything that you need, everything that you need to cut, and lots of tips on here as well. Don't use your iron like a rolling pin. You press up and down. Uh, when you need, when you see the number of squares that are needed for each colour, it can be a little daunting. Don't let this deter you. Cut enough for one column, sew it, and then cut some more. So that's a really good idea. So you've got the book that's full of hints and tips as well. So exclusive to Sewing Street at the moment. It's just £23.99 is your price. And I love all the colours. You tend to find that with scraps, don't you, that you've just got lots and lots of different colours. And it doesn't matter that they don't all go on a lot of these quilts. Sometimes it's quite nice that they don't. Um, £27.95. Fancy. £23.99 is our price here. Remember, that is exclusive at the moment. Now then. It's a sensational quilt for scrap lovers. Do you not have any scraps? Are you, are you just starting sewing maybe? I'd love to make one of those, but where do, you, where do you get scraps from if you don't have scraps? We've got scraps. We've got scraps in abundance for you. Half of the stock of the scrap bag is gone. There is in the bag, when you get this home, you're going to get two kilograms, which is about four pounds. Um, all at random, they'll be all different sizes, all different lengths, all different types of fabric. So for instance, in this one, we've got some textured blenders, we've got some solids, um, we have some, some oh, with a little bit of sparkle on there, and there's a huge piece of denim as well. So we can't guarantee what you're going to get, but we can guarantee the weight that you're going to get is two kilograms in weight. Imagine a quilt just made out of those, because there's... You know, there will be some small bits in here as well, but there are some rather large pieces. About half a metre there. Do we know we're doing this? That's not scrap. <laughs> so again, I can't guarantee, but um, you will have quite a big, uh, quite a big bunch. We're down to single figures now. Order a couple of them if you want to. Um, so you will have some small scraps. You'll have some thin strips. You'll have some jelly roll. It's okay. I've got sticky fingers. But they're not going to last very long. They are going to sell out. So if you want to order those, if you're on the website, please check out a few baskets as soon as you can. Um, or if you order on the phone lines, then I suggest you do that quicker, uh, sooner, <laughs> sooner rather than late. Um, it was going to be such a professional day today. It's not quite working out. How long have we got until we go home? <laughs> Ten minutes till scissor time. <laughs> Should we go over this side? Um, now this is, um, these aren't scraps, but the barley pop strips you could easily use with most of the quilts in here. These would make a sensational quilt. Um, you have two and a half inch strips and there are 40 of those in total. And they're all kind of um, batik kind of style. They are gorgeous. Um, made in barley. And it, this is one where they drop wax onto it, isn't it? So it's a traditional hand dyeing technique, which means that every one of them is going to be slightly different. The colours will be the same, but the actual dots and spots and things will be slightly different. Um, but look at the colours that you've got. They, they just blend like a rainbow from one to another. It's a vionetta of colour. Um, so this is the pastel that we're looking at at the moment. It's £39.99, 40 pieces in total and each two and a half inches wide. So if you've got any books with um, projects for jelly rolls, Jelly rolls are a brand name by Moda, so we can't call these jelly rolls, but they're the same size. That's why they're called fabric strips, and besides that, they're not in a roll. But look at this, isn't that gorgeous? That looks quite mystical and magical, doesn't it? I'm thinking unicorns. And the reds, loads of different colours in this one. And of course, these are folded in half, so they are the length of the bolt, so they'll be um, 44 inches long. And there's 40 pieces in total, all 100% cotton. Always really, really popular. This could actually be something that ties in with, um, with your scraps, isn't it? So you think, oh, I've got lots and lots of different colours scraps, but you need something. Like we've got in this one, 
you've got the purple stripe and the red stripe and the green stripe. This could be all of your bits and bobs of random scraps in different colours and prints and then the plainer ones kind of tie it together. So you could use a barley pops in the strips to kind of to make it look a little bit more organised if that makes sense. Loads of those for you. If you're making, um, oh what are they called? The, the, uh, the fabric roll rug kind of things that you wrap your fabric around and then zigzag stitch them together. Um, that would be perfect for those as well. You kind of wind, wind them round and round and round and get bigger and bigger and bigger. So you just wrap this around your phone before you start making them. So I've done that before. Um, okay, so we've got four options for you. Five minutes to scissor time. I get a bit nervous about scissor time. That's your pastel option. Then we have the under the sea. I, I like this one. I think that's my favourite. There's blues and purples and almost look like splashes of water, don't they? So under the sea is quite a good title for this one. Again, two and a half inches wide and 44 inches in length for £39.99. pence. shan't open all of those up, but you get the... Oh, here we are. We've got one open. Does it all look at those? I'm giving them all out because I just want to dive in there and have a swim around. So it's all in a lagoon with palm trees and white sands. <gasps> cocktail bar or a mocktail bar because, of course, I don't drink. Um, at £39.99. I do, I do lie very well. Look at that one, it's like the stars at night. Well, it's not really, is it? But you can imagine that being in a, in a fantasy world. It's a lot of fabric there, isn't it? And I'm assuming that's been opened because part of it's been used as well. Don't store yours like this. Those would look nice over there, wouldn't they? Hmm. So that is the Under the Sea, the blues. Uh, this is the brights. So these are proper rainbow colours, aren't they? You make a lovely quilt with those. Um, sky blues, bright greens, all the way through to bright pinks, crimsons, golden sunshine. Oh, golden sunshine at the side of my lagoon with white sands. And one of those beach umbrellas that's made out of straw. £39.99 is your price there. And then, only a couple of minutes. And then we have um, autumn. You know, if all you're going to do is um, sew the strips together, you're going to create a really pretty piece of fabric with those and it will be really big. Remember, there's 40 pieces, 44 inches in length and two and a half inches in width. But I love the shades on there. Everything's been picked out for you. So they all blend together really well. That's what I like about pre-cut fabrics when they're put into bundles like this. Somebody else has made the choice for you. If you were presented with all of these, oh, I don't know if that go with that, and that maybe put the greens together. But when somebody else has put together the complete choice, you know that they're all going to blend beautifully. They're all 100% cotton and really lovely um, fabric quality there as well. So that's £39.99. pence. Have you got yours already? What have, you, what have you made with your barley pops? Have you been quilting? Have you been bag making? Have you been making cushion covers? Have you been making rugs? Love to see your pictures. And we can email us or send your images in on, uh, on Facebook as well. It'd be nice to hear from you. Let me give you a reminder of our Sensational Quilts for Scrap Lovers book. Colour on cutting strategies. I like that. We've got a strategy. And these are the kind of quilts that you're going to be able to make. <laughs> um, so the frontal boundaries, that's the one that we have on the set at the moment, True North. I do like the sleepy, teepy, the sleepy tiny teepy town. I've not seen anything quite like that before. I think that's lovely. And the Fracture Four Pack. Sunrise, Sunsets. So how many have we got? Six, ten, eleven of those all together. So the introduction, all of the tools you need, using up odd shapes and bias edges. That could be useful. But again, don't just think of these as, oh, I haven't got the patience, I don't have the time, I want a quicker project. There's no reason why you couldn't make just a couple of blocks using these techniques and then make a purse or a bag out of them instead. Uh, we've had a message, is that on, on Facebook? Oh, we've had an email from Margot. Hi, Margot. She says, hello, Debbie, hello, Margot. Um, after 30 years and lockdown, You've inspired me to take up sewing again. 
after 30 years. She brought the beach hook kit from yesterday and the quilting book. Oh, thank you. Oh, I hope you enjoy them. And she says, you can't wait to receive them and loves my moat from Margot in St. Helens. Thank you very much, Margot in St. Helens. Um, that, that's so nice to hear. It's lovely to have, have feedback like that. And welcome back to sewing after 30 years. Things might have changed a bit over 30 years. Your machines will change, your fabrics change. There's new technologies, the, the way that fabrics work and colour. Everything changes, doesn't it? So it's like starting all over anew. So it's an exciting time for you, Margot. Do keep in touch. Um, oh, we've got a question from Marcus as well. Morning, Marcus. And he says, hi, Debbie. Hi, Marcus. Can I help? Oh, I'll, I'll try. I was wondering if you knew the best glue for sticking fabric to metal clasps. Yes, I do. Gutterman HT2. Um, we have sold it here. I'm not sure if it's on the website or not. Um, it's a clear glue. It's incredibly strong. I've actually glued um, bags into frames with it before now and then thought I want to reuse that frame and I can't get the thing out. It's really, really strong. Um, I'll use it for, I'll pop a little bit behind, I've got, oh, black everywhere. I pop a little bit behind buttons if I'm making toys and things like that to hold them and make them really secure so the buttons don't come off if my grandchildren are playing with them. And I'll use them if I'm putting a bag strap onto the front of a bag. You know, like the, the, the leather bag straps you can buy that you you kind of hand sew through the holes in the leather, those sort. Um, you can't, they're really thick, you can't pin them on. So I'll put glue on there, leave it to dry, it's solid anyway, and then sew it through. But definitely H, Gutemann HT2. We'll check if we have some on the website or not. Um, our scrap bag sold out now. Well done for getting hold of that one. Um, right, it's going to be scissor time in just a second. So we're going to go to a little break where I clear up my mess and try and get some sticky off my hands. And wish we were back in just a second. Hello, I'm Kerry from Living in Loveliness and I'm delighted to be part of the Sewing Street team. I'm based in Wolverhampton and I absolutely love working with fabulous fabrics. In particular, I love working with fat quarters and showing you how to get the most from your scraps. I love bringing communities of sewists together and encouraging people to sew for greater causes. Most recently, we have been sewing for our NHS and key workers. Um, I look forward to bringing you hints, tips and techniques. I'll see you soon. Hi, I'm Debbie Shaw from Sewing Street and these are my five top tips for successful sewing. So number one, always use a good quality thread. A good quality thread will keep your seams stronger and also help to prevent lint building up inside your sewing machine. Tip number two, if your project isn't going quite according to plan, put it down, walk away from it, come back again the next day and you'll probably find that things don't seem half as bad as they did. My tip number three, never throw away your sewing machine manual, always keep it to hand because you're going to find hints and tips, techniques and troubleshooting in that manual. You'll miss it if you lose it. My tip number four is to read your pattern instructions before you even cut out your fabric. Different manufacturers of patterns will give you different instructions, different ways of constructing your garments and different seam allowances. So to have a successful garment, you need to follow the instructions precisely. And then tip number five is don't give up. Every professional sewer sewed their first seam. Every professional quilter quilted their first quilt. Every professional quilter sewed their first line of wonky stitches and had to get out the quick and pick. That's no different to you. So I hope you find these useful. If you want more hints and tips, then why not go to Sewing Street on Channel 74 on Freeview, on Sky 670, and of course we have a YouTube channel where you can catch up on previous demonstrations. We'll see you soon. Amazing! The, these are the brand new scissors, electric scissors, that we have for you in the show today. Um, I've had a play with them for a few days and gosh, I've got so many uses for them. The main thing I'm thinking is 
scissor action for those of you whose hands don't work too well because here all you need to do is to press a button and you have blades working at something like 1200 reps a minute um, cutting through your fabric. They're safe, they're not sharp, it's lightweight, it's easy to use, it's rechargeable, but you can use this while it's actually plugged in as well. So if you're having problems doing this, then why not just do this? If you're a little bit wary of using a rotary cutter, ruler and mat, because maybe your hands are a little bit wobbly or you've never used one before, this is completely safe, there's no sharp ends to it and it, you're not going to be able to cut through your fingers on that by accident either. If you're cutting through larger pieces of fabric, then this is perfect again because the strain on your hands of cutting with scissors or the risk of snagging is taken away um, and you get a really smooth, perfect cut line every single time. The thickness that you're going to be able to cut with with these scissors is around about eight millimetres. That's over half an inch. That's a lot of fabric. And I'll be showing you that shortly as well, all of the different types of fabric that you're going to be able to cut. But let me show you what you're going to get in the box as well, because this is a really comprehensive deal. At the moment, I've got the charged up battery on the back. So the battery will come with its own charging unit, which is like this. So plug that in, 145 minutes you're going to plug it in to start with. So I suggest when you get this home that you will leave that plugged in overnight and you're ready to go the next morning. If you can't wait and there's no charge in there, you've also got another charging unit um, which goes in here, that screws onto the end there and then this plugs straight into the mains. So you're ready to go as soon as you get it home. I don't know what you're thinking. No, that's the wrong plug on there. We're even going to give you the right plug to go with it so you don't have to go out and buy an adapter. There is a screwdriver. There are some tiny screws in here as well. And you do get two blades. And the reason for that, there's an A blade and a B blade. The A blade they're calling blunt. I wouldn't say it was. And the B blade is the sharper blade. That's the one that I have in here at the moment. The sharper blade basically is designed for thicker, heavier fabrics. This isn't just for cutting fabric. It's for those of you who are paper crafting or if you're doing any kind of craft around the home as well. So it'll cut through paper, it'll cut through card, it'll cut through cardboard. Shall we show you exactly what these scissors are capable of? Um, now we have had a look around and it's actually taken quite a while to bring these scissors to you because as you know with Sewing Street from the machines that we bring you, we only go for the top of the range. We only go for the very, very best quality. There are other electric scissors on the market and I mentioned previously my, my life with another shopping channel we used to sell them and they were quite impressive. They weren't impressive enough for me to buy some, but they were quite impressive. And the difference is the power that you have with these scissors and the fact that they have tungsten blades. The one that I had before had alloy blades. This is quicker and stronger. And no matter what I've tried to, to punish these scissors with, as far as fabrics are concerned, because you have to do that. If you're putting something to the test, you put it to the test. I tried to cut through wood doweling. That didn't work. That was a little bit too much. Um, but it hasn't struggled with anything. There's been no, you know, you don't hear the motor really coming to a grind because cutting through thick fabrics just doesn't work for it. Um, it's an absolute breeze. Let me show you. So it all comes with your instructions and everything in the box. And of course, you're going to be able to cut through ordinary fabric, but I've got, I've got quite a pile of stuff here. And I'll show you in a second the reason, the one fabric, which isn't what you'd expect, why I would use these scissors. So faux leather. You can cut with scissors. It's a little bit tough. But look how, oops, look how easy this is. I've got the wrong charger on there. That's because I was showing you how to plug it in and it wasn't plugged in. There we go. Now you can cut accurately, you can cut in a straight line. You can take your time. If you stop, nothing is going to happen. There's no light stopping on a sewing machine and you get a load of thread that's all bunched up. You can cut quickly, you can cut slowly. You can cut accurately. And you can cut speedily and you can cut through several layers. I wouldn't normally cut through more than two layers together. But here, if you wanted to, you can. It's an absolute doddle. There is no struggle. You don't hear the motor straining when it goes through thicker fabric. Um, you could cut through more layers. I wouldn't. But just to show you, oops, you could do. So that's through four layers. That was the noise there was vibrating on the table. I shouldn't have really done that. 
So what kind of fabrics do you have at home? What about cork? It's almost like you're touching the fabric. You don't have to lift it up, it's not a struggle. You just touch the end of it and then glide it through. And although they're quite quick, don't worry about them getting carried away with you. You can go really slowly if you need to. If you want it to be really accurate, if you're cutting out something like a pattern, I'll show you that later on, you, you don't have to do this really quickly. You can be as slow as you like. So if you're cutting around shape, then you can do But if you want to be quick, it's, it's literally like touching the top of the fabric and it just glides through there. Let's have a look what else we've got. And let me show you, we have some dedicated paper scissors, don't we? I think that was them. They're fabric scissors, but they're a little bit blunt. Cardboard. I, I'm a sewer, I don't use cardboard. I do use cardboard sometimes to strengthen the bottom of maybe storage boxes. Not necessarily a handbag because it might get wet when I put it down or something. Um, but if you're making something, maybe um, a magazine rack that you're covering in fabric, then this is, this is cheap and cheerful and you've probably got a load from deliveries that you've already had. But when you cut this with scissors, apart from the fact it's hard, it tends to bend You get, and it's not very neat. And by the time you get to where the scissors are here, that's when it starts to go a little bit wrong. So it's not very tidy. It's not a straight line. Look at this. Perfect straight line. No struggle for me. All I'm doing is pressing a button. I can be left or right handed, it doesn't matter. I'm simply pressing a button and it's gliding through rather thick corrugated cardboard. Are you sewing with, oh, talking about bag bases, mesh bag bases. If you're cutting a lot of those, that can be a bit on your hands, can't it? But here, So that's plastic, and while we're talking about plastic, this is a really thick plastic, um, which, well, I sew. I don't use plastic. I'm thinking templates, and again, if you're paper crafting, if you've got something like, uh, is it do craft, um, where you can buy perspex sheets like this and then make your own templates out of them. I'd struggle with a pair of scissors, but easily. And again, if you're making templates, you're going to want to put shapes and be accurate. So you can draw your shape onto the plastic and then simply cut it out. That's actually quite fun. So this is something that the whole family can use. Um, I wouldn't suggest that you give it to small children, but there are safety features on here. You're not going to cut through your finger unless you really try very hard. If you look at the way that the blades cut, they're smooth on the ends, there's no sharp point. This end of the blade doesn't actually meet when they're cutting. So to, to be able to cut anything, you need to put it, so that's your piece of fabric, it needs to be not here and not there, but it needs to actually touch here. And that's the only time it'll cut. So if you do put your fingers here, all you're going to get is a vibration. Um, obviously, little fingers are going to go further in. But it's only at that one point that you're actually cutting. Now, because you're only cutting at that one point and you're cutting at such high speed, can you imagine cutting with a pair of scissors that quickly? Um, because you're cutting at such a high speed, you don't get nicks and, and uh, like catches in your thread as you're cutting, as you can do with scissors. You know when you're cutting um, with a pair of scissors and you've got a really nice sharp pair of scissors and you go, whoo, if you've got big pieces of fabric, maybe you're cutting curtains, whoo, but sometimes it catches and it's on the weave of the fabric normally. If you can get the cut right on the weave as you're going along the fabric, you're probably going to be fine. But if you catch one of the weft stitches, you get a nick in it, then you haven't got a straight line. Because of the amount of cuts you're making per second with this, it's not going to happen. And again, you don't have to go quickly. So on a long piece of fabric, if you're cutting curtains,
people do is you can literally do that. I'm not saying your scissors are redundant. I wouldn't use these for snipping tiny threads or cutting into curves, but these are certainly going to be such a bonus for you if you're cutting larger items, if you're cutting thick, thicker fabric, or if you have problems when you're using your hands as well. Let's have a think what else we would use these for. Are you using Craftex? So this is, um, it's basically paper. Um, there's other brands available. Um, but it's paper that's been treated to behave like fabric so you can wash it and you can tumble dry it, you can make bags out of it and it's a really really popular medium. Um, it's made out of paper so it's going to blunt your scissors. These scissors don't care, they love a challenge. They're not going to blunt just because you're cutting through paper, this is what they've been made to do. So you can easily cut through this, they glide through the fabrics. So I could be making bag handles, I could be using these for applique. It's just so easy and that's, that's quite thick, it's around about the thickness of a leather. That's its, that's its selling point. Um, you're making bag straps or you've got uh, webbing to make bag straps with. They can be quite thick and quite tough. Let's have a look at this one. Have a practice. What I have found is if you stop, that's when you can get the little mark. But with these, again, <laughs> that was me coming off the end a bit too soon. Practice, have a try. You're not going to damage anything. Um, let's have a look. Oh, now see, this, this was a, a handbag. I, I like to have a look around. Um, uh, charity shops for handbags. I'd never use one, I don't think, but I look at the hardware because you can get some amazing uh, buckles and buttons and, and snaps and, and things that have been made specifically by the designer, so they're not available in the shops. So it's a really good resource if you want something unusual. This has come on a leather strap. I don't normally use leather. So I can get through it. I can cut that strap off, look at that. How much easier is that? So if I'm going to if I'm going to be doing a lot of this, here we go. Oh, I just need to get that in. So, oh come on. It did go through, it's a small area. If the scissors were struggling, you would have heard the motor struggle with it. I shan't show you, but that's what happened with the wooden doweling. It just would not, I didn't expect it to cut through wood or concrete or anything like that, but I thought I'm really gonna try this. And when I tried to cut through the wood, it, it, it did kind of, it did struggle a little bit. It fought its best, but it did struggle a little bit. But it didn't cutting through thick leather like that one. Let me save that one. You can go in the bin, but I'll save you. Um, Mm, let's have a look what else we've got. A paper crafter. I just want to talk again about the quality. Um, shop around for, um, for different types of uh, electric scissors like this and you'll find different price ranges. What you'll also find is different quality. The blade is one of the most important things on this, um, these electric scissors. They're long lasting. You do get two of them. One they're calling blunt which is the B blade. So if you're just cutting through cottons and papers and finer fabrics, then this one's going to be absolutely fine. If you've got thicker fabrics or you're cutting up cardboard boxes, then put on the A blade. They're really easy to interchange. And these are tungsten. These are really heavy duty. They're going to last. They're not going to blunt. I, I, you're not going to have to replace those. Um, so bear that in mind when you're looking at other electric scissors and they are um, alloy. They're not going to last as long. There is a demonstration on YouTube um, that I was watching the other day because I, I was trying to do my research and see what other people do and what, what their scissors are like. And uh, the girl was cutting through, oh, what was it? I think it was just a heavy paper. And you could hear the scissors just going, and you could see her really pushing to try and get them through. She did it eventually. But I thought, you know, these, these would cope with 10 times that thickness. And when I first saw them, I thought, actually, this looks like something that's in your toolbox, not in your sewing box. They really are heavy duty, high quality scissors. Um, do you run a business? Are you cutting reams and reams of fabric off the roll or off the bolt? And you're laying your fabric out and, you, and you've got your scissors and you've got the biggest ones you can. And, still going, mm, 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 mm. and it's too big. It rolls too big for a rotary cutter. 
it goes through, it glides through them so easily. Are you making curtains? Are you making curtains or using upholstery? And that's your business. You're going to be able to cut accurately and speedily so much quicker than scissors. This is just cardstock. A lot of people have um, more than one craft that they're interested in. That's one piece of card. Let's see how well it says eight millimeters. So let's see what we've got here. One, two, three, four. Let's let's try four. Now these did go onto the website yesterday, and they're already already started selling straight away. Well, that's four pieces. Five, six, seven, eight pieces. Nine, ten pieces. Oh, I've not tried it this thick before. That's pretty thick. That's no problem. Um, oh, what else have we got? Curtain making. You'll have your header tape that you may need to cut through. And, of course, you've got your fabric that goes on top of that as well. This has got nylon threads in it. That's easy. No problem. Are you dressmaking? I don't want to cut out my dress really quickly and I don't want to go shum, I want it to be accurate. But I want it to be easy as well. So that's the yoke off a dress. So I'd normally pin that in place. Obviously don't cut through pins. Could be shredding your office paperwork, cutting up old or out of date credit cards. OK, let's see how accurate we can be. So let's... So I've only roughly cut out the pattern, which is what I normally tend to do. And on straight lines, I like to use a rotor cutter. That's easy. And then on curved lines, I do that by hand with a pair of scissors. So you don't have to be quick, you don't have to rush everything. For this, it's just so much easier on your hands than using scissors and you're not going to get foot marks because of the speed and the amount of foot you're doing per second. So I'm not using a ruler, I'm not using any marking tools, I'm not using a rotary cutter. It doesn't matter that I'm cutting slowly because I want to be really accurate. Vibration. Didn't touch the cut through my finger. How easy was that? And do you know what's, what's quite important as well? What was quite surprising, it's not particularly important, but I thought it was quite surprising. Um, when you are cutting through fabric, you don't have to lift it. If I'm cutting with scissors, I'm lifting the fabric at the end to cut through because you can't cut flat on the table and cut accurately because the fabric will move. Um, when I'm cutting with these, you can start right on the edge and it kind of grips onto the fabric. So I'm not lifting it, I'm not pulling it, I'm not holding it. It's almost like you're just pointing at the fabric. And that just glides through. A challenge for these scissors. I never would really fit a carpet using the scissors, but I just thought, you know, we're going to give it a challenge. Let's give it a challenge. So this is, um, it's, I don't know, medium weight carpet. It's gone through. Right. So if you're... Again, they... <laughs> The noise was the vibration. Whenever you're cutting on something like that, then use a cutting mat 
underneath it, because otherwise you may scratch your table. Yeah, I've got a hole in the middle of my dining room carpet now. Because I'm so dedicated to my job, I really wanted to show you the benefits of using these scissors. Um, what about felt? Lots of you have already checked out your baskets with these. Well done. And we've sold twice as many today as we did yesterday. Um, oh, now, when we're talking about upcycling, I, I do actually, so I spend a lot of time in charity shops um, and I buy a lot of denim. I love working with worn out denim. So jeans that have been used and worn, the bigger the size you buy, the more denim you get. So I'll be the one going in there buying a size 30. I want these please. And I'll chop it up and I'll make it into bags, mainly bags, made it into cushion covers and all kinds of things. Um, but again, if you've got scissors, you have to, well, I, I tend to cut along the side of the seam that's fine. Problem I get when I get to these bits and when I get to these bits because I struggle a bit. Um, a lot of us have problems with our hands, myself included, I'm getting there. Um, all of my knuckles apparently are heading that way. Um, and I do feel a lot of strain when I'm using scissors. That's why I normally use a rotary cutter for most of my work. Um, but even with a rotary cutter, you've got the pressure and a lot of people are worried about that blade because they're so sharp. So I'm sorry, I love my rotary cutter but it may well be out of business. So I'm just sitting, you're touching it. It's, you can't believe how easy this is. I'm not pushing it or anything. I'm literally touching it. My hands aren't doing this with a pair of scissors. I'm coming up towards that thick seam at the end. Oh, I've just got the thread right around there. But it's cut through it, no problem. Let's give it a challenge and go with this seam. This is the seam that's gonna be a problem if there is one. Not that one. Right, are we ready? Oh, I've got it caught again. That's me. That's me going too quickly with it. But it's gone through. Yeah, it got caught on the bit after the seam. The seam wasn't a problem at all. But I was saying earlier on, surprisingly, that's not the reason I got excited about them. It's quite exciting. That's really easy. I got excited about this. There's no weight to it. It's a viscose fabric. It's really lightweight. It's, it's beautiful to wear. It drapes amazingly. And it's a devil to cut because it slips all over the place. There's, it's so fine. And this could be a georgette. It could be a chiffon. And you put it on the table. Obviously, I have a bigger bit than this if I'm dressmaking. And it'll flop off the table. And as you're trying to sew, it's twisted. And you think you've cut a straight line. Then when you look at it, it kind of bends look because there's so much given it. You think you've cut a straight line and then it's not, it's, it's a little bit like that. So you cut it again and then your pattern's too small. It's lovely fabric and I love working with it, but it's an effort. Look, look at that. I thought I cut a straight line and the selvage is down here somewhere. Um, so with your scissors, I'm not lifting up the fabric. I'm not moving it, I'm not stretching it, I'm not twisting it. I'm taking my time with it. I find with scissors, where have they gone? Because you've got to lift it. Already it's, it's, it's twisting. Oh. And this is all moving because you, you can't really cut this very flat. So you end up with a seam that you think looks straight. That's why I love them. And because they're cutting so many times, I know we've got to move on, I'm going on and on about these scissors. Um, because it's cutting so many times per second, you're, you're minimising fraying. A lot of these fabrics can fray an awful lot as well when you're using viscose. That'd make a nice scarf actually, wouldn't it? I think I've used up every single sample I've got. Um, that's quite impressive as well, isn't it? You think about electric scissors as being quick and big pieces of fabric and curtains and quick cutting, but you can be really slow, you can be really accurate. So even going around curves, cutting out shapes, fussy cutting items, 
they are perfect and you can see the quality of those I can't stress that enough these aren't they're not toys they're not just for fabric they're household electric scissors I would be a bit annoyed if my husband removed the bacon rind with them but you know I suppose you could should have brought some bacon in shouldn't I um, so just a quick reminder of what's in the box there are two blades there's the B blade which is the blunt blade I don't see how it's blunt um, and then there's the A blade they're a safe blade there's no point on the end of them um, you're getting the rechargeable battery and you can plug them in and use them directly from the mains with the second lead that you get here it's recommended that you take the blade off while you're changing anything like this just in case it sets it off it won't do any damage to anything it'll just make you jump there's the extra plug now there are screws little screws that go in the side here to hold the head on but the head clips in place as well I haven't been using those screws because I was going to show you how to change the heads um, but it's extra safety so that slides on there like so and it clips into place so that's not going to move anywhere but you've got extra safety with those two screws and you're even getting two spare screws in case you lose them as well and then that's the, uh, the, the mains one so that goes in there and screws on so you can use it while you're charging up the battery you can still get going and we're giving you the plug because that's not the right one so that goes in there and we're even giving you a screwdriver to put those little screws in and there are your full instructions in there as well and those are quite comprehensive so maintenance and care and things like that and remember you can cut up to eight millimeters in thickness personally I, I don't have anything eight millimeters thick that I'd want to cut but it shows the the strength of them I think there's a lot more reasons why I'd use these just than they cut through thick fabrics um, although do you know when you get parcels and they're wrapped up with that really thick plastic webbing oh that's a devil to cut through isn't it and if you are cutting up cardboard you're chopping down boxes or carpets <laughs> It just makes it such a such a breeze but think quality we are down to single figures now get them at home and give them a try so well done if you've got hold of yours let me know how you get on with them when you get them home I'd love to hear from you um, just to let you know if you're new to the world of shopping TV if you have this in your basket and you think well I'll put them in my basket then I'll go and do a bit of research or I'll phone somebody or I'll ask somebody's opinion um, you can do that that's absolutely fine but now we're down to single figures if we have 11 people ordering on the phone lines all at the same time I'm afraid you might come back and find your basket empty don't want to miss out on this I'm, I'm not assuming we'll get them back again but um, but we don't know and that will go back in the box for storage perfectly I just haven't made a very good job of that um, so £169.99 we have seven left they're gonna go there's six left there's five left there's four left. <laughs> it's a good time to check out now we're going to go to a quick break and then we're going to come back where are we oh we've got my new kits coming up in the next hour I didn't really have quickly that had gone um so go and place your order now if you want to otherwise we'll see you again in a couple of minutes Hello, I'm Kerry from Living in Loveliness and I'm delighted to be part of the Sewing Street team. I'm based in Wolverhampton and I absolutely love working with fabulous fabrics. In particular, I love working with fat quarters and showing you how to get the most from your scraps. I love bringing communities of sewists together and encouraging people to sew for greater causes. Most recently, we have been sewing for our NHS and key workers. Um, I look forward to bringing you hints, tips and techniques. I'll see you soon. Hello and welcome. We love hearing from you and we really hope that you can follow us on our social media platforms. We've got Instagram, which is at Sewing Street. Uh, we have Facebook. We've got two Facebook pages. One is the Sewing Street TV page and the other one is Sewing Street Fans. All three of these are monitored all the time by our t wonderful team. And if you want to message us on air, Drop us a line on either of those three and we'll definitely be able to answer your questions that you may have. If you post on the actual wall, we can perhaps answer there. Otherwise, message us as well. That works really, really well. Thank you so much for being involved. And it's only because of this community that we're able to bring you all these different diverse products and to be able to answer your questions that you may have. 
Another way you can stay in touch with us is by signing up to our newsletter. These newsletters are sent out to you very regularly and they include not only our guest profiles of upcoming guests, but also amazing uh, shows that we've got coming up for you. And if you want to look at the amazing products before everybody else, that's the best way to do it. If you'd like to sign up and you haven't already, the link to follow is www.sewingstreet.com forward slash sign up. You won't regret it. Thank you. If you love sewing, then you need the UK's favourite sewing magazine. Every month, you'll receive exclusive patterns. Follow simple step-by-step -step guides, suitable for all skill levels, to make your own stunning clothes, accessories and more, together with inspiring tips and tricks from industry experts. Join in and discover your love for sewing. Try Love Sewing today and get your first three issues for just £6. Would you like to take part in our weekly competition? If you do, then all you have to do is head to the Sewing Street fan page group on Facebook. Post your picture of your make. Myself, Debbie Shaw and John Cole Morgan love looking at all of your makes every week. We pick our favourite and announce the winner every Friday live on the show. Happy sewing and good luck. Hi, I'm Debbie Shaw from Sewing Street and these are my five top tips for successful sewing. So number one, always use a good quality thread. A good quality thread will keep your seams stronger and also help to prevent lint building up inside your sewing machine. Tip number two, if your project isn't going quite according to plan, put it down, walk away from it, come back again the next day and you'll probably find that things don't seem half as bad as they did. My tip number three, never throw away your sewing machine manual, always keep it to hand because you're going to find hints and tips, techniques and troubleshooting in that manual. You'll miss it if you lose it. My tip number four is to read your pattern instructions before you even cut out your fabric. Different manufacturers of patterns will give you different instructions, different ways of constructing your garments and different seam allowances. So to have a successful garment, you need to follow the instructions precisely. And then tip number five is don't give up. Every professional sewer sewed their first seam. Every professional quilter quilted their first quilt. Every professional quilter sewed their first line of wonky stitches and had to get out the quick and pick. That's no different to you. So I hope you find these useful. If you want more hints and tips, then why not go to Sewing Street on Channel 74 on Freeview, on Sky 670, and of course we have a YouTube channel where you can catch up on previous demonstrations. We'll see you soon. Hello, welcome back. You're watching Sewing Street and I'm Debbie and in this hour we're going to do a little bit of reversible bag making. Um, this is, in fact, the one that you see on the stand here is a bag that I made um, quite off the cuff in uh, a show on um, Sewing Street last week and it's a reversible bag. I'll show you that later on. And it was just so popular and I had so many questions about it and can we use other fabrics and I missed the instructions. Can you write them down for me? I did. So we've put together three different colour options of fabrics for you and you've got all of your instructions. They're on two sheets there as well and on the other side. So all of your instructions to make them and the measurements are all included in there as well. So and of course once you've got the pattern you've got your measurements, you've got your instructions, you can use your own fabrics to make as many of these as you like. So this is the pink bundle. This has been the most popular so far. And in the bundle you will have, this is canvas, so it's the soft cotton canvas fabric. And if I just open that up, you can see you've got a 140 centimetres wide, um, which is far too much. Well, it's a bit too much for the bags, but you will have enough left over to make a purse or a cosmetic bag with it, which is what we're going to show you in the show. So that's the pink. I love this butterfly fabric. It looks quite vintage the background um looks like um like old driftwood or you know really old wood that's been painted and the paint starts to peel on it which gives it a lovely vintage look and i like the way that they are they're proper butterflies i don't know all the names um but they're not like cartoon versions they're, they'll be <laughs> yeah. all of the names as in the species not dave <laughs> dave the butterfly 
And this one comes with a grey canvas. So we haven't kind of put a, a, a cheaper fabric in there as a contrast, because it is reversible. It's important that both fabrics are the same quality. Um, so that's your silver grey option. And again, that's 140 centimetres wide. What I do suggest that um, you buy some Valiseline H640 to give your bag a little bit of oomph. We haven't put that in the bundle because it would increase the price somewhat and um, you may have some yourself already. So that's the first one. Um, that's, that's your favourite one so far. Let me just show you the bag. So that's using the pink on the outside and then on the inside is the grey. So you've got a plainer look. So maybe a daytime to evening time. But on this one, I cut out one of the butterfly shapes and I've used that as a piece of applique. So again, if you wanted to do that, then um, invest in a roll or a, a packet of uh, Bondweb. And that's what I stuck that on with and did a zigzag stitch around the side. So that's that. I like the pink side, actually. But if you just want to change, maybe you, you're going on holiday eventually and you don't want to take too many bags. You can have, let's say, your daytime and your evening bag with that one. But it's a nice big size as well, so it's, it's great for, for travelling. There aren't any fasteners and closures on it because that would make it irreversible. But there again, if you're not bothered about it being reversible, you could easily put a magnetic snap or even add a flap over the top between the handles. But again, that would make it not a reversible bag. OK, so that's the pink. Um, then we'll have a look at the blue. So you've got the same print of butterfly, but this one has like a, a denim blue in the background. And this time we've mixed it with a pink. Isn't that pretty? That goes so well. So you'll have the same idea. You'll have the butterflies on the one side and the pink on the other. And these, again, are both the super soft canvases. So they're a really good, sturdy fabric to use. You could use them without the, um, the Vilaiseline or fusible fleece. Your bag would be a little bit floppy, but it would still be strong. You don't need to put any interfacing on the bag. So it's those two with all of your full instructions with pictures too. So I like to put as many photos in there as I possibly can. All simple instructions. I don't use abbreviations. I don't use jargon. Anybody could make this bag. If it's the first time you've ever made a bag, anybody can make this bag. You just need a sewing machine. I wouldn't make a bag by hand. It would take a while. You need tiny, tiny stitches. I wouldn't have the patience. Um, and you'd need tiny stitches to make the seam stronger. The third option we have for you is this one. Um, so this is a uh, Moda fabric, Le Papillon. I do still need to sew around the top of this one. This is the one that I made live um, in the show last week. To be honest, it is slightly smaller than the measurements because I thought when I got it home and you were asking for the measurements, I'm going to make it bigger. I'm going to make it as big as I possibly can out of the fabric that you're going to get. You could make it smaller if you wanted to. Um, oh, now then, we have less of these than either of the other two. That's been really popular. Oh, I haven't sewn the whole up either. Oh, see, I'm, I made it. I know, you, you, you see all my secrets now. I shall show you how to sew the hole over because it's about time I did that. And thing is, I made the bag and then left it here and it went up in the office and it got photographed and everything, but I didn't take it home to finish it properly. So I'll finish it properly now. Honestly. These are your fabrics. Now these are 112 wide. Still plenty enough to make the bag. Maybe a little bit left over. Let's measure it. You'll have about eight inches left over. That's plenty enough to make a purse. So that's the width of the bag there. I mean, obviously you'd measure that and everything, but if that's the width of the bag with the seam allowance, that's on the fold. So you'll have, yep, yeah, you'll have about eight, open up, you'll have about eight inches left over. So you could easily make maybe two little purses, one bigger purse from what's left over there. Um, there are no instructions for the purses. That's why I thought I'd do it on the show for you. So by the instructions for the bag, all of the measurements and everything are on there. Do you know what I'm thinking with this? Because they're both, they're, it's Moda, it's beautiful quality fabric. If you have some, whoa, up you go. If you have some um, blue fabric at home, you can make two reversible bags. 
So, so you're not using the, both of your motors on one bag. If you've got a lovely deep navy or an Air Force blue, you could use the same colour fabric on both of those. Um, make them reversible or make them not. That's entirely up to you. There's a thought. I like to make your money stretch as far as it'll possibly go. Right, we'll finish that. So we'll hang that one up there now. There we go. Now, I did suggest that you go for some H640. Not Bosal foam, um, because you've got pleats in here, it's, it'll make it too stiff, it'll, it'll do that, it'll be too bulky. So H640 is ideal. You'll get a bigger piece than this, this is the bit that I'm going to demo with. <laughs> you actually get a metre square. In fact, let me show you what you get, you can get an idea from that, do you? Um, if you haven't seen it before, it's polyester. And it's got knobbly bits on one side. The knobbly bits are glue. So that's what you're actually getting. There's a whole metre square. So those little knobbly bits on that side are adhesive. So you're going to put this to the back of your fabric and iron from the fabric side and use lots of steam. So when your fabric goes on there, and I shall show you that later on, if you're using a big piece of fabric, you plonk it on there and then start ironing from the middle and go outwards. Don't push it because you'll twist the fabric, but just gently glide outwards. I've never found it to wrinkle. No, I did. I did. I, I used it on a very, very fine fabric a few weeks ago and I did get a few wrinkles. Um, but while it's still warm, you can peel it off and you can put it back down and smooth it out and re-iron it. Um, with Belizeline, that's one of the few fusible fleeces I've found that doesn't wrinkle. There's one other brand that I like um, and there's a lot of brands that do these fusible fleeces that are just a nightmare. I'm knocking everything over today. Um, oh, Helen, morning, Helen. She's, uh, she took dogs out early this morning so she could get back to watch at nine. She's got a coffee in her hands, ready and waiting. Welcome along. <laughs> right, so that's your H640. Should we do a bit of sewing? I'm going to finish this one first of all. Um, so I need a needle and thread. I'd forgotten I hadn't sewn it up, so I haven't... I haven't prepped a needle and thread, but I know I've got some in my box here. And we're going to do a ladder stitch. And it's quite important that you are very careful. If it, this is going to be reversible, I don't want to see the stitches on this side. Um, oh, that was sharp. Because these stitches are going to be seen from the outside as well. So let's choose a thread. Oh, should we go for brown? I don't want to put, ideally I'd like a cream one. Let me see what I've got in my box. I might, I've got a, I've got a, that'll do. I've got a grey. I'll just use my own. I did, I did want brown, but. So because it's reversible, normally with, with a bag, on the bag lining, I would, that needle's a bit thick actually. Um, I would, um, just sew the opening closed by machine because no one's ever going to see it on the bottom of your bag but this time they are going to see it on the bottom of your bag so I want to make an invisible stitch so the smaller the hole you can leave in the bottom the less hand sewing you're going to have to do so when you pull the edges of the gap they automatically fold in so I'm going to take I'm going to take that out to start with that's the end of my machine sewing thread and tuck it in. I'm going to hide the knot inside here and tuck the tail of the thread inside so it's all nice and neat. And then the smaller the stitch you can do, the better. So I'm going to go in one side and out the other by about a quarter of an inch, an eighth of an inch if you've got the patience, and pull it through. I'll open that up so you can see what's happening. And then go back into this side right on the fold, in and out, and pull it through. I'm going to leave my finger there so that you can see what's happening. So in and out on the fold and pull, in and out on the fold and pull. So it's called a ladder stitch because now we're starting to look, is that over it? look like a ladder. So just make sure I'm still on that fold. You could iron that to make it more distinguishable if you like. So in and out, in and out, and then pull the thread. 
and those stitches should disappear. The smaller you make the stitch, the more like the machine stitch it's going to be, and of course the stronger it's going to be as well. I love doing this. It's, it's a little bit like when um, I'm doing English paper piecing or smocking. I just find it so rewarding when you pull those stitches and they all disappear. I normally do them smaller than this, but I just want to, to get it done. It's this bit, look, and you just pull them and they've gone. So you shouldn't really be able to see where your hand stitches and your machine stitches start and finish. So again, just keep saying, this is the kind of seam that you would sew if you were repairing a seam in the side of a pair of jeans or a skirt or something like that. Or if you're sewing up a turning up in a toy, that would normally be in a seam that you don't see. Or maybe you're making something like hanging hearts. So anywhere where you, you have an open seam that needs to be hand sewn, that you want to be invisible, oops, I've just got that loop around there, then this is the stitch to use. use this, if you're using a pattern fabric, try and match the colour of the background of the fabric. And if you can't, or if you've got a multicoloured fabric, use grey or beige because those are the colours that just tend to disappear into your work. So that's that. Almost there. It is the very bottom seam of the bag though, so if it's the first time you've done this and it does get a little bit wrinkly and it's a bag that you're making for yourself, it doesn't really matter. This is the, the last seam that anybody's going to see. I'd concentrate more than on what's going on around the top of the bag than the bottom. Uh, almost at the end, just keep pulling that through every so often. Not too tight that you break your stitches. Just coming up to the end here and I want a nice tight knot at the end. So I like to do almost like a French knot. So I'll go in and out before the needle comes through. I'm going to wrap that round two or three times. Pull that through like, like a little French knot on the end and then I've got a really neat finish like so. So when that's pressed, that's a little bit wrinkly there. You shouldn't really see where the hand stitches are compared to the machine stitches. The smaller the, smaller the stitches the better. If it's not a reversible bug then you make and then put it on the machine that's fine. Right, we have a stock warning for you. Um, this fab, the French one, this one. We've only got five. Oh, we've only got five of these left. Remember, you're getting two half meters of fabric, and this is Moda Le Papillon fabric, so it's really beautiful quality. And there is the um, the, the instructions included there as well. I'll just show you those quickly while you're there. So full instructions on two pages with a photograph for every single step of the way. And I keep those instructions really, really simple. The blue butterflies, which is this one. Oh, that's been going really quickly. We've only got two of those left. Oh, OK. <laughs> so I was going to demo with that one, but that's not going to happen now. I have to demo with the pink one. I'm just going to sew around the top of this bag while I'm here, just so that if we come back to it another time, it's, it's finished. So this is the final stage. It's just top stitching around here. So I'm using a longer stitch. Oh, I've not used this machine before. What should we do on a stitch length? Where's that? And I'm using the free arm just to sew around the top. Oh, that's nice. Oh, oh, see how quiet this, oh. Oh, it's got an integrated walking foot on the back there as well. Oh, oh, don't want those there. There you go. Around here. And you're going to see these stitches on both sides of the bag, so nice and slowly. keeping the seam right on the top. I'm not letting that overlap a little bit. 
It doesn't matter if it's not a reversible bag, but this has got to look exactly the same on both sides. So I want the seam to sit right on the top. Oh, this machine's lovely. I'm give, given a choice normally of um, sewing machines when they come into the studio in the morning. And I'm normally, well, whatever's there, I don't mind. I can use any machine. Oh, and it's got a little reversing thing on the foot pedal. <laughs> Love it. And can't you change that so that it can be a cutting pedal instead of a foot pedal? I'm going to have to try this one. Now, so this morning when I came in, normally there's a little 560, that's not there at the moment, is it? But when I came into it this morning, there was the Juki. And I thought, I've never used that machine before, but I'll have a go. Must be pretty much the same as any other machine. But I can't believe how quiet it is. I may have to take that home to prep. If I can lift it. So now the bag's finished. So that's the one look. That's the second look. I think the two of them make a lovely bag together. But if I was to be honest with this fabric, if you've got a plain blue, I would use a plain blue and make two bags out of it. And maybe you've got your instructions. Now there's no pattern, so there's nothing to cut out and draw around. Um, the patterns for rectangles of fabric, which is all this is, I just think, well, it's a rect I can draw a rectangle, for goodness sake, I don't need a pattern. So if I'd have added a pattern, it would have been an A3 size pattern that would have put the price of everything up. Um, and you might not use it anyway. So the measurements are in there. But once you've got the measurements, you can make these in any fabric that you like. Um, oh, OK. Now, the, the, the bundle that was flying at the beginning was the pink. Now that's the only one we've got left. So that one's sold out, that one's sold out. Technically, apparently, this has been the most popular because we had more of them. I knew you'd like this one. Now then, let's make a purse. So I'm showing you what you can do is what less, what's left over. So when you buy the pattern, it will be for the bag, <clears throat> but you will have a bit left. So let me measure this exactly. Um, so. You will need 18 inches by 44 of outer fabric. I've got more than that. Um, cutting the pieces. Cut two pieces of outer and two of lining. Measure. I'm, tell I'm, not, I'm not telling you this because I want you to buy the instructions. I shall read it quietly. I'm just trying to figure out how much I've got left over, so I'm not actually making the bag. Oh, I can't do centimetres. I picked up the Janome ruler in centimetres when I meant to pick up inches. Sorry, Joe. Joe's our director. He's next door here. And Sewing Street on my days is normally a bit of a workout for Joe. The little one, please. Thank you. Because we're being, you know, socially aware, um, there's only the two of us in the studio, and Hannah, who's producing, is in the room upstairs. And I can't very well kind of, I'm just going to go and get this because if you just, if you just switched on now, you're going to, what's going on? There's nobody there. What's, what's happening at uh, Sewing Street Towers? Um, so poor old Joe ends up doing a bit of running around for me. That's how much I need for that. If I'm going from this direction, So in, including the selvage, I'm going to need that much fabric for the bag. So ooh, all of that is left over. So I'm going to mark that with an, the friction pen. So that is for my bag. I need a long, well, it's up to you the length of the handles. You could, in effect, make the handles on the bag that long, uh, twice, folded over. They could be really, really long handles. So I'm going to leave eight inches at the top, 24 minus eight, 16. So let's go down there. So I know I've got plenty for my bag and I've got plenty left over. With your papillon, that's a little bit narrower, remember, so you'd be able to make a smaller bag if you've gone for that one. Uh, 
If you wanted to go for these scissors, by the way, you are the one lucky person that we have a pair available for. There we go. Didn't even go over much. Amazing. So that's that. Now let's have a think how we're going to do this. I'll have a little bit extra of the grey left over because on my bag I've used the pink for the handles. If you wanted to use the grey for the handles then you have a little bit more of the pink left over. Or you could do one grey handle and one pink handle. The choice is yours. As they say. So let's cut another piece of the grey. I know if I cut it to the same size then it's going to be fine. I'm going to cut this from the salvage side I think. So we chop the salvage off to start with. So how straight that was. And now then, how are we going to do this? The bag's going to have to be that big because, well, I'm only making a purse because the butterflies is a directional fabric. Or I could, no, I could do it. I could do it that way. I could have a deep, we'll do it that way. See how things evolve. So this side, or oh, should we? I don't know. Should do that. Oh, we could do that. We'll do that. I've got a fork again. Come out. <laughs> wants to cut more than I want to cut. Been carried away with the scissors. So we could do that, we'll have a flap going over there like that, so that'll fasten with a magnetic snap. So the lining, oh, well the lining needs to be the same size, doesn't it? And then because this is cut on the fold, I just need to cut down the centre of this. I just want to cut for the day, that's all. There's, there's no reason for this whatsoever apart from just cutting for the day. And I'm just going to trim off the edge of this. So we're all the same size. Okay. So I'm going to have a purse which is about that big and I want a flap going over there like that with a magnetic snap. Um, so let's do that and let's chop off this bit. I'll give you the measurements in just a minute. Where did I say? There, there, there. That and the same with this bit. It's a little bit wider but it doesn't matter. Okay, so let me measure that for you. So if you take a note at home, I have one piece of outer fabric and one piece of lining with a little curly bit. And this is from the leftovers of the bag, remember. So two pieces, it'll be a bit smaller if you've got the butterfly fabric because the butterfly fabric wasn't as wide. And this measures, we do a crossways first, nine inches by eight inches, okay? Um, whenever you see measurements, by the way, if you weren't aware, um, if you're buying a pair of curtains, if you've got the measurements on the curtains, or you see instructions on um, any project that you're making, it's always that measurement first, then that measurement. So if you see a piece of fabric that you need to cut that measures 14 inches by 13 inches, it'll be 14 inches that way, 13 inches that way. Just the same when you're buying curtains. If you're buying um, 90 by 54, that, oh, that'll be wide. It'll be 54 by 90. 54 inches that wide, 90 inches that wide. And if it's something that's three-dimensional, it's always that way first, that way second, and depth third. Just in case you didn't know. So two pieces, nine by eight, nine by eight. And then one piece of lining and one piece of outer fabric. Or oh, need to do something. I'll show you that in a second. Um, and these measure... 12 inches by 9 inches, so they're the same width. I just need to trim that lining down a little bit. Shan't bother on there, that's okay. 
Now this is a directional fabric. So the way my bag is going to go together when it's sewn is like that. And I've got a flap going over the top. Now my butterflies are upside down. So do be aware of that. So you've got a choice of either just turning the fabric around so all my butterflies are the same way. They will be upside down on the back. If you're happy with that, that's fine. If you want them to be the same way, then you're going to have to join them. And I join right across the top here. So simply cut that piece off and sew it to the bottom end. So when you open that up, you've got some butterflies facing that way and some facing that way. I haven't got a problem with mine being upside down on the back, I don't think. I'm going to trim the corners on this and make them round. That's on the flap, remember, make sure you get that the right side. So I need something round. That would do. No particular size, this measures five inches across, but you could make smaller ones if you wish. And I'm just going to mark like that. And then cut. Can't do that with the rotary cutter, can you? So now that, with that, when it folds over, I've got a nice round curve. I am going to trim this back again. And trim down there. Okay, now let's put it together. On the outside pieces, I'm going to use my H640, so that needs ironing on. And I've just dropped my clasp. I'll be wondering what I've done with that, as is normally the case. So, knobbly side up on your H640. Line that up to the end so I can make the most of it. And then blaster steam. Like so. I'm securing that in the middle. I don't want to go over onto the H640 because I don't want to get on the, that on the bottom of my iron. So as long as I do that and then go around here. And trim. You can cut it on here as well with these scissors. You know, I'm not getting my, my mat. I love my rotary cutter ruler and mat and I shall continue using it. But do you know, when you've got your scissors out, then it, it's, it's just less of a faff, isn't it? So a nice steam to hold that in place. And we'll do the same on the front of the bag here. You can join it together as well if you need to, if you're running out of it. I only put the H640 on the outside of the fabric because that's the bit that you feel. I feel it's a little wasted if you put it on the lining. No reason why you can't. If you're using a very fine fabric, then you can put interfacing on and then your H640 over the top of it. Or two layers of interfacing. Nobody sees inside your bag. Well, as in, in between the lining and the outer parts of your bag. Just trim that little bit off there. Because I can. And then that didn't go right up to the edges, so we'll give that a blast. And that goes down there, right. So that's that, and that's that. Just stick the end of it. doesn't matter if this isn't stuck down absolutely 100% completely because it'll all go into a seam allowance anyway. Then we'll put the magnetic snap on, which I just bear with me because I've dropped the back of it. In fact, I've dropped both pieces of the back of it. Yeah, they're all down in the cellar. Oh no. Oh no. Must have another one in here somewhere. A 
I'll just put the back on one side, but when you get it home, or when you start making yours, make sure you put the back on both sides, because it keeps it nice and secure. That machine comes with an extension table, by the way, which I keep kicking. Right, so that's the flap bit, that's the bottom bit. So magnetic snaps come in two halves. We might have some on the website, I'm not sure. Uh, oh, we do, lovely there. Um, I think they're bigger, bigger than this one, which is a bonus. You've got a fat bit and you've got a thin bit. The thin bit normally goes on the flap of a bag and the fat bit goes on the back of a bag. So let's put this onto the flap first of all. So I'm going to fold in half and just crease the centre mark of the curve of the flap and then take the back of your snap. I'm going to put this at least an inch away from the edge because when I sew, I've got a seam allowance of about a quarter of an inch, but then I still want to get the foot of the sewing machine around here when I do the top stitching. So if you put the clasp too close to the edge, you're not going to be able to sew. If you do that by mistake, then put the zipper foot on your sewing machine and you should be able to get around it that way. So the hole goes in the centre, about an inch, maybe an inch and a quarter from the edge. So I'm going to put a dot in the middle and I'm also going to draw down the two little lines either side. Because this fabric is not too fine, but it's a little bit fine, I'm going to cut a piece of scrap. That's not really scrap. I'm going to use my June Taylor Basting Spray Early Bird. Saving two pounds off the usual. And, oops, just... <laughs> everything's falling to pieces today. Just one of those days. Oh, come on, go back on again. There we go. And that is going to go on the back of where I'm cutting the hole, and that's just going to strengthen it a little bit. Now, poor old scissors, they have been feeling a bit redundant today, but this is something I can't do with the electric scissors, is just to snip little tiny holes into the mark. You can use your quick and pick that you get with your sewing machine if you prefer. And then these legs go through, cut those holes as small as you can because you can always make a small hole bigger but if you cut a big hole you've just cut a big hole and then squish those out then you've got to start again and that's on and the second half of the snap is going to go to the front of the bag so to mark the position I'm going to line this up as if I'd made the thing so that goes there Curl it around. Give yourself a little bit of room here, so I'm not going to pull that tight around the edge. I'm just going to make it a little bit loose, because I may have a lot of stuff in there at some point. And then mark the position of the centre there, where I want that to be. And I'm just going to measure with my Creative Grid Ruler the centre point. So that's four and a half inches, so that is bang in the centre. That's exactly where I want it. So again, a little line either side. I have lost the back off this one, remember, but you'll use yours. And then fold that over and a tiny little snip all the way through the fleece as well. And then the fat part of the snap goes on the back there. Pop the back on and squish the legs out. It doesn't matter whether they go out or in, but I think you'll find it's easier to squish them outwards. And that's there. Now we can start putting it all together. Right, so there's my, is that my lining bit? Is that my lining bit? Okay. I don't want to see any joining seams on the outside of this bag. So I'm going to put, and let me just think how we're going to do this. Let's arrange it all together. So that goes there, that goes there, that goes on there. And then that will go on there. So that's the way that I want it all to go together. So let's flip these two over and do that. I think that's right. Right there, that goes there, that goes across the bottom. They're right sides together. I think that's right. And I'm going to sew, no, I'm not. No, I'm not, I'm not going to put, I'm not going to put that on. I'm going to sew straight across the bottom. So I haven't got the lining piece on at this point. Oh, if you could see what was down here. Hello, hello. Oh, I didn't know you were there. Oh, it's nice to see you. Oh, bye. Yeah, family's good as well. Thank you. Yeah. OK, bye. Bye. And 
so straight across the bottom. I shouldn't have put the lining on. So anyway, what's the weather like where you are? It's uh, It was lovely and sunny this morning when I was leaving to come to work. But um, it's supposed to get hot this weekend, isn't it? Right, then I'll need the linings to go on. So that's there, that goes there, that goes over there. So that needs to go right sides together. Hang on a minute. That needs, I am making it up as I go along actually. So that needs to go right sides over there. So that goes like that. Okay, so then that'll turn through nicely. So on the back of there, I'm going to need the lining. So I'm, I'm, I should have done that first. Going to. fever at the moment. Oh, that's a shame. Um, do, you, do you want to just nip off and get yourself a tissue? Um, that was the door. Off, off you go and get the door quickly. I'm going to sew the top of the lining piece to the top of the pocket piece like so. It'll all be fine in the edit. It's nice sewing machine this one, it's ever so quick and quiet. Then I'm going to fold the top of that over and I'm just going to leave a tiny, tiny little border of the grey on there because I think it looks nice. And so just along the top of this, just to make it look nice. It doesn't make any difference because all that's going to happen with the lining being that bit shorter is that it'll disappear by about a sixteenth of an inch inside the seam. So I've got that and that looks, that looks quite nice, doesn't it? Then we're going to put this right sides together with the front of the bag. So the two right sides of the outer bag are together like so. And then I'm just going to sew straight across the bottom but not all the way around. Now I've remembered what on earth I'm supposed to be doing. And if you're making bags like this, I would have um, my machine's got an integrated walking foot on the back, but if you don't have one, it's worth buying one. It's going to make a lot of bags. So just across the bottom, and then the final flap lining piece needs to go right sides down. So I've got the back of the snap facing up. And this time I'm going to sew all the way around the edge, but leave a turning gap in the bottom. So to hold those in place, I'm just going to use a couple of wonder clips. I'd use some of the studio wonder clips, but if I did, that quilt would fall down. They're very useful. Right, I'm going to sew from the fleecy side, so from the side I've just sewn, so I can see where this stitch line is, because I'm going to leave the gap about here, but I want to marry up the stitches to the ones that I've just sewn. Like that. So just a quick back stitch there because there'll be a bit of pressure on the seam just there. Into the corner with the needle down and turn. Straight down the side. So take it easy around the curve because I want to keep that nice and curvy. I'm just going a little bit slower. This is what I was meaning about the magnetic snap. It's actually here but I didn't want to get the foot too close to it because I didn't want a wobbly line going around it. So back around that side. Just line up the edges. Into the corner, needle down, and I'm going to try and stop right on that seam line that I've already sewn. And then back across a little way 
and cut. Then I'm going to snip off the corners. Oh, I've got it caught again. There we go. And I'm going to just trim around the curves as well. You can do pink and shears around this bit, but I'm having a moment with these scissors, so I'm just going to keep using them. Well, we still have one pair left. And I can trim off that as well. There we go. Now we can turn the whole thing through. I hope I've got it right. It's not like I haven't done this a thousand times. So pull that out there. Now, when you turn it through for the first time, you'll go, oh, it's still inside out. What have I done wrong? Just like I did with the ladder stitch in the, in the bag earlier on, you'll need to do this by hand. So fold the two pieces in and sew across. Reason being, because I'm sewing through the whole of the bag, if I do that on a sewing machine, you're going to see the stitches on the outside of the bag. Because now I'm going to turn that whole thing through again. And there's my little bag. Let's poke that corner through. Remember, this is from leftovers. If you've gone for the blue pappy on the motor bag, you might just be able to get this out of your leftovers. It may have to be a little bit smaller, but you will be able to make a purse out of your leftovers, promise you. So that's that. And then that folds over like that. And there's my little purse. I just need to top stitch around the edge just to finish that up and make it look nice. And of course, I haven't sewn that hole over in the middle. But after seeing the, the first bag this morning, you realise I don't always do that. Not for demonstration purposes. So I just want to poke that corner out a little bit. Um, oh, sorry. No, you're OK. Oh, good. OK. If you just move out to... In fact, just pass me that. that, that this, this one there. Thank you. And then that goes in there. It's not very tall, the new floor manager. Um, so I'm just getting into that corner to poke it out because that was bugging me a little bit. That's it. And that curve isn't quite curvy enough. There. So I'm going to top stitch right in the corner there. So I've already got the top, stitch, top stitching across the top of that bit. And I want to carry that on to here and then top stitch around there like that. Just so it's nice and neat. I need to start that from that side. There we go. So I'll do a... And away we go. Turn this around and then we'll just go around the curve. And again, it, this wants to curl over just a little tiny bit. And I like that because it looks like I've got piping around the bag. So I'm going to keep that there. That's because I've used the um, H640 and it's just, it's rebelling a little bit. It's fighting back. It wants to be seen. Just make that a bit more curvy. That's it. I'm just coming up to the second side. Not really suitable to use your free arm on this one. So down into that corner, turn the corner. I'll show you that in just a second because that's looking really nice and neat. Just sew across the final bit and reverse a couple of stitches to secure and snip. So that's the bit that I've just done there. So it's, it's a nice finishing touch there, look. So that's that. Obviously, I've drawn a line, but it makes the flap nice and neat and helps that to stay in place. And then that fastens over there. And you've got a useful little purse. In fact, it's not so little, is it? 
You can put a dividing pocket into um, bags like this. So you know where I put the one piece here, eventually, um, do two pieces and then you'll have a dividing pocket so you'll have two on the inside. You can't really put a zip fastening on something like this, not made this way. But the way that I put the whole thing together, you know, sewed across the bottom and then put the lining on and then left a gap, just means there's no hand sewing in the seams all the way around so it gives a really nice finish to it. So that's what you can do with your leftovers. Remember, that's not in your instructions. That's just a, a little, sorry, just a little idea of what you can do with those leftovers because you're getting quite a bit. Um, now, if you wanted to make the bag, this is the one. It is reversible. You will have, oh, look at that. That's not good, is it? Little thread poking out. You'll have all of the fabric that you need to make this and enough left over to make that as well. No instructions for this one, but this one you have the full instructions in the kit and they're my instructions so they're really easy to follow. Where's the other sheet? And no jargon, there's no pattern, it's all about the measurements. Um, once you've got the idea of how to make the bag, then you can, of course, make more. You can make bigger, you can make smaller. It doesn't have to be reversible, because it is reversible means that there's no fastenings on here, so there's no snaps or anything like that. Um, if you want to make it a non-reversible bag, then you could put a magnetic snap in the centre or add a flap or do something like that. So that's the pink side out. This is the grey side out and it's all cotton canvas so it's a really good strong sturdy bag and the only addition I had um, was the fusible fleece to go on the inside. That's not included in the bundle because I thought you might have some of your own and it would put the price up quite a lot as well. Um, and I used some bonder web to put the butterfly applique on there. We've got only 11 of these left now. We've sold out of the blue option, we've sold out of the Papillon, the Moda option, so this is the only one that we've actually got left. And you know, I think it's my favourite. I know you shouldn't have favourites, but I do. We did have most of the stock of this one because we thought this one would be your favourite too. So it's a beautiful quality of canvas. It's a good, strong, sturdy bag, and it makes a big bag. The length of the straps I've put will go over the shoulder. I'm, I'm not a fan of of over the arm bags personally, I like them out of the way and over my shoulder, but there's enough fabric in there that you can make them twice the length if you wanted a long strap. Um, so you can you could kind of adjust it and personalise it to make it all your very own. Um, so the pink fabric, obviously I've cut into it now, but it's 140 centimetres wide, so you've got an awful lot of fabric there. And then the silver grey, and remember these are both canvases and your instructions, £19.49. And, and I can't wait to see what you've been making with yours and the purses that you make with the scraps that are left over. You could do a mini version of this and um, put a zip across the top. Obviously that wouldn't be reversible, but you could make a little zipped cosmetic bag to match maybe. So that's another Christmas or birthday present out of the way. Or maybe you're just going to use it to, uh, to give yourself a treat. They're £19.99. You wouldn't buy that in a store, would you, for that much? And feel free to sell them if you want to as well. Don't mind at all. Make yourself a little bit of money back. Um, we have H640, and I do suggest that you pop this on your order. We know lots of you got it already. And this is why it's not actually in the, um, in the instructions because we don't cut this down, we'd have to give you a metre square and we'd charge you another £19.99, another £9.99, which would make your bag kit a, rather expensive. And I thought you might have some of this already. If you haven't, you've got plenty enough to make two bags out of this one for £9.99. So it's a metre square, it's single-sided fusible, it's soft, but it gives your bag a sturdiness. So it's not a, a stand-up alone bag, like they're using a stiff interface in like Decaville or something like that. But it really does give a luxurial, luxurial, a luxurial feel to your bag. <laughs> um, we've got more bag making coming up in the next hour. We've got some books, we've got some kits for you, and we've got lots more canvases, fabrics for you to choose from. So go put the, uh, the kettle on, have a quick cuppa, and we'll see you again in a couple of minutes. Would you like to take part in our weekly competition? If you do, then all you have to do is head to the Sewing Street fan page group on Facebook. 
post your picture of your make. Myself, Debbie Shaw and John Cole Morgan love looking at all of your makes every week. We pick our favourite and announce the winner every Friday live on the show. Happy sewing and good luck. Hello there, I'm Debbie Shaw and I would love you to join me on the first Monday of every single month for Sewing Street Surgery. Now this is a dedicated hour where I answer your questions and that could be questions about techniques, it could be questions about tools, it could be questions about new products or maybe something that you've seen that you just don't understand. There's a lot of questions about tensions on sewing machines and there's a lot of questions about working with different weights of fabrics. So if you have a question that you'd like to ask me, the easiest way to bring your question over to us is to go to our Facebook page and post your question on there. I will collate all of those questions throughout the week. If we need any new products for you or if we need any new demonstrations, those will all be worked on leading up to that first Monday of the month. So do join me, Debbie Shaw, on Sewing Street Surgery on the first Monday. Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers Landing Page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the Watch Live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalogue by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping. Hello and welcome. We love hearing from you and we really hope that you can follow us on our social media platforms. We've got Instagram, which is at Sewing Street. Uh, we have Facebook. We've got two Facebook pages. One is the Sewing Street TV page and the other one is Sewing Street Fans. All three of these are monitored all the time by our t wonderful team. And if you want to message us on air, Drop us a line on either of those three and we'll definitely be able to answer your questions that you may have. If you post on the actual wall, we can perhaps answer there. Otherwise, message us as well. That works really, really well. Thank you so much for being involved. And it's only because of this community that we're able to bring you all these different diverse products and to be able to answer your questions that you may have. Another way you can stay in touch with us is by signing up to our newsletter. These newsletters are sent out to you very regularly and they include not only our guest profiles of upcoming guests, but also amazing uh, shows that we've got coming up for you. And if you want to look at the amazing products before everybody else, that's the best way to do it. If you'd like to sign up and you haven't already, the link to follow is www.sewingstreet.com forward slash sign up. You won't regret it. Thank you. Hello, good morning and welcome back to Sewing Street. This is our last live hour of the morning and we're going to be doing some bag making. Well, we've got some kits. I think I've done enough bag making for a, for a lifetime, really. And we've got lots of fabrics to show you. Um, also, we've got some lovely comments on Facebook. Uh, Val has messaged in saying, Hi Debbie, loving the bags and your shows. Can you tell me, is the pattern in one of your books and also any chance of doing a show with your clip pocket rucksack, especially as a kit? There's a thought, Val. There's a thought. Um, that bag, there is a similar one in my um, Half Yard Home book, but it's not as big as this one. Same idea, but it's not as big. So that, that one's only available in that pink kit now. And Dawn, hi Dawn, says, I've made a few of these bags. She's put some pictures on there using my book. That's my sewing room accessories book. Um, my favourite bags are the Builder Bag ones. Got those on the show. And she's been making teacher's gifts. And by coincidence, I've actually got that one with me that you've been making. So this one has got the bag in the centre that you can make separately and that is what Dawn's been using as, um, as teacher's um, 
presents. So that's a nice idea. Thank you for that, Dawn. And Dawn says, la, 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 how is the new studio coming along? They're putting the bar in at the moment and we're going to have um, mirrored balls on the ceiling for when we have a disco, when we, when we finish late at night. So it's, um, yeah, we, we're, we're getting around to it. I should keep you informed on that one. Uh, we are going to go to a quick break because uh, I hope you're going to join us in a one minute silence. We're thinking about the side events that have happened in Reading lately. We'll see you again shortly. So let's um, show what we have for the rest of the show today. Um, remember, we've still got our early bird available, which is the June Taylor basting spray. That's on special offer with a two pound saving. We're going to be looking at some ideas for um, waddings for quilts as well. We have some bag kits for you. We've got some bag books and then we've got some appropriate fabric to make your bags with as well. Um, so let's start with the early bird, which is this one. This is June Taylor Basting Spray. She's calling it quilting basting spray. I don't think it knows whether it's a quilt or a bag, to be honest. But basically you've got spray pins. So you can use this instead of pinning, instead of tacking, and to hold wadding or fabrics together. Great for applique as well. You spray it on the wrong side of your fabric, um, pop one piece of fabric on top of another, and you can peel it away and keep reusing it, which is why it's called a basting spray. It's not permanent designed for use with fabric so it's not going to um, gunk up the needle on your sewing machine or anything like that so give the shanna, uh, the sh div give the shanna cake give the can a shake beforehand and uh, use about 12 10 to 12 inches away from your work and just give a light spray if you put too much spray on, it's going to wet your fabric as i demonstrated earlier on today it'll dry it won't stain it won't damage and it will eventually wash out and you're getting a lot for your money there there's a 10 ounce spray can for 10 pounds 49 normally 12 pounds 49 so that will stay at this price until the end of the day today or while well, we have the stock so instead of pinning and tacking your quilt by hand, and tacking's great, you've got to remove them afterwards. So it's kind of twice the job, I think. So use your basting spray instead. And you've got a lot there to play with. Threads everywhere. Who's in tomorrow? Is it John or Vicky? Because somebody's going to come and think, oh, a mess in here. I'm going to blame anybody but me. We've got a couple of waddings for you. So, they're both queen size, which is larger, smaller than a king size, but bigger than a single. They, I think it's queen size four and a half feet across, can't remember. And we've got two different uh, fibre contents for you. This one is 80-20, so you have 80% cotton and 20% polyester. If I'm making a quilt that's going to go on a bed, um, this is the... Um, the fibre content that I would choose to use. The reason being, I like a cotton because it's breathable and I like the polyester because it helps to stop shrinkage and it helps the cotton to keep its shape. So 80-20 is the best of both worlds and I think it's the best blend for you. It's 90 by 108 inches, that's your queen size. The information on the packaging also gives you the distance that you can sew apart, so you can stitch up to 10 inches apart. That's quite important when you're looking at wadding, if you're new to us, because some waddings will stay stitched at 2 inches apart, which basically means when you're quilting them, you've got to have your quilting stitches really tight together. But with a wadding like this one, to, to help it keep its shape, basically, because this is a non-woven fabric, it's felted, so it's kind of mashed together. But if I'm making a quilt, like this, for instance, and I don't want to quilt the whole quilt like this one has been. I want to stitch in the ditch around here. 
I don't have to worry about the wadding in the center losing its shape. And in fact, with the size, what did I say that size was? 10 inches. You could easily quilt a block this big just by stitching around the edge, by stitching in the ditch. That's about that size without having to worry about the wadding coming apart in the centre of it. So if you are buying different types of waddings, that's worth having a look at, depending on what kind of quilt you're going to make. Um, so this one is £44.99. That would be my choice. However... We do have a polyester one for you. Polyester sometimes can feel like a scouring pad. This isn't it, super soft polyester. Again, it's queen size. Um, I wouldn't use it on a baby's bed, personally, but you could quite easily use this on a bed quilt. Um, it doesn't have the breathability, I don't think, of the natural fibres, but it does have the softness. And it, you know, it's huge. It's huge. Um, if you're using this on something that's going to be washed a lot, polyester will dry quicker than the cotton one, so that's an advantage. It's deeper, so it has a, a thicker loft, which is the thickness, than the natural one would do. So if you really want your stitches to sink into something and make it three-dimensional, this would be a good one. But if you're making wool hangings, if you're making lap quilts, if you're making bags and you just want that really sumptuous finish, then this is the one that you're going to go for. So oh, we've had, had a question from Hannah and she says, what's the difference between wadding and batting? No difference. We call it wadding in the UK, they call it batting in the States and that's the only difference. You do tend to find actually a lot of um, UK demonstrators will call it batting just like they call basting stitches, basting stitches, which is an American term, we call them tacking stitches. So I think a lot of people have got used to that kind of terminology. But if you think, no, I don't want swatting, I want batting. It is, it's exactly the same thing, it's just a different term. See, basting to me is what you do with a chicken in the oven. But basting stitches, tacking stitches, basting spray, tacking spray, that's, they're all, all kind of are different languages. Um, <laughs> I'm going to show you these, but I have spent the whole morning knocking them over and picking them back up again, and they still end up being balanced on top of a box. Well, that worked. You have four spools of Aurifil thread. Aurifil is, from what I've heard from you, the favoured make of thread for quilting. Um, but it's not just for quilting, it's strong thread. So you've got 100% cotton, so if you're using cotton fabric, and, and in fact you probably prefer to use a cotton thread when you're quilting anyway, um, but if you're using cotton fabric and you want the same fibre content, then go for this one. A strong thread has fewer fibres um, to make it strong, so it's, it's using longer um, strands of cotton to make up the, the thread in the first place, and you'll find it's not very fluffy. And you can see that because of the sheen on this. So a strong fibre means that your seam's going to be strong, and less fluff means less cleaning of your sewing machine. That's what depicts a quality sewing thread. You've got four basic colours, 1,300 metres in each, um, and they're just £35.99. That's a lot for a reel of thread. I mean, normally you get 1,000 metres or 500 metres. Would you like me to count the meterage? One. That could take me the rest of the week. You can take the ends of these off, by the way. So you have that. So the end of the thread when you get them home will be trapped in there like that. Got storage for needles in there too. Oh, you know the thread that wraps around like this? So that's crossed over. That's ideally meant to go on a, a spool which is horizontal. If you have a thread that's just wrapped round, I can't remember the words of it, but it just goes straight across, then that comes off the spool vertically. It doesn't really matter, but if you find your thread twisting, it may, may be worth trying either upright or horizontal. Just so that, just to throw that in there, just as a little snippet of information. I should, actually, I'm going to demonstrate that in the next sewing surgery with a toilet roll. That's worth putting Monday the 6th in your diary, isn't it? I'm not going to sew with toilet roll, that would be ridiculous. Um, but again, £35.99 and you've got your basic colours, so there's the black, the off-white, the grey, silver grey and you've got the white as well for £35.99. We do have others, have a look on the website for those on sewingstreet.com. Um, let me show you. Actually, oh, that would be nice, wouldn't it? My reversible bag in PU fabric. I don't use it on one side, it's a bit heavy. 
there's no reason why you couldn't use this on the outside of a bag. Oh, and then your tiger fabric is the reversible one. No, I wouldn't reverse it. I'd use that as lining. I wouldn't make it reversible. I wouldn't want that on the inside. I'm just spouting things out from my mind now, so I do apologise. This is the most amazing fabric. It's a um, polyurethane of dressmaking quality, which means that it's soft, it's easy to wear, it has a knitted back, so it's got stretch to it. So it has a recovery, it has a memory. So even if you're wearing something that goes a little bit baggy on the bottom or the knees, then it'll, um, a, a little bit of steam on the back and it'll go back into shape. It's washable, it's ironable from the back. It's not going to lose its color and it's not going to distort. I'm going to use a cool wash. I have used this uh, on a 90 degree wash to see what happened and it made a right mess of it. So not a hot wash, but because I mean you can wipe the front clean, but if you're using this as a tyre, it's quite nice occasionally to wash the back of it. Um, now it's £6.99. You may have noticed, I mean I'm here on a Sunday and a Monday every week for the most weeks. You may have noticed that every single show I get this. It's because I love it. It's one of my favourite fabrics. But look at the stretch in that. It's great for bag making because it's stretchy. It doesn't mean you've got a bouncy bag. It's easy to sew with. I would recommend that you use either a walking foot or a non-slip foot, a Teflon foot or a rolling foot because this side may stick to the underside of your, the presser foot on your sewing machine. If you haven't got any of those and don't have the desire to buy one, um, then try putting some masking tape onto the underside. In fact, actually, masking tape can be a little bit sticky. If you have surgical tape, it's a little bit more expensive. That's great for putting patterns together as well, because you can see through it and you can iron over it. Um, oh, that's by the by. But if you've got some surgical tape, just put a little bit of that on the bottom of your presser foot and it should glide over the top. Remember to make a hole in it for the needle to go through though. It's 140 centimetres wide. You don't need a leather needle. A universal needle or a denim needle will be fine. In fact, don't use a leather needle, you'll make holes in it. However, if you do have punch holes in it, if you need to do some unpicking or you've put pins in out of the seam allowance, then give it a blast of steam from the back and most of the time those holes will simply close over again. Don't be put off by the selvage, it's not a pretty one. Some fabrics have ever such pretty selvage. This is a little bit ugly. So just like with any fabric, you'll chop that off. So don't get it home and think, oh, that's peeling. That's what it's supposed to look like. But it's a dream to work with. A lot of the time with, uh, with laminates and faux leathers, they can be really stiff. And this isn't. It's like, I was going to say it's like silk, but it's not. It's just incredibly soft. Red can be a difficult one with laminates, I think, because it can be too shiny. And sometimes a very shiny, stiff red looks cheap. I think this looks so expensive. And I think it's worth going for a couple of them as well. Because with a piece that big, that is the outside of four bags of that size. So just a cotton lining. If you're going to make a clutch bag, that's a big clutch bag. You can make eight of those with this one piece. Or a laptop case even. It's that kind of size, isn't it? Tablet case, something like that. Phone holders. Um, I have smocked with it before because it's got the soft back on it. If you're doing a little bit... Canadian smocking, not the kind you put on dresses. Um, but I have made smocked cushion covers. You know, the round ones that your grandma had in the 1960s. Um, because it folds so nicely. So it's an absolute dream to work with. So you can see why I've done the show all the time. Love it. Colour wise, we have the red. I love this. Oh, that looks nice, doesn't it? <gasps> That's the mustard, in fact. Now I like that one. Oh, that goes really well. Have a look at this shortly. That's your mustard at £6.99 for half a metre. If you wanted to make a jacket out of them um, and you need more than half a metre, then order two units and you'll have a metre. Order four units and you'll have two metres and they'll all come in one length. This is an expensive looking colour, I think. This is the taupe. And the taupe would mix very well with the black. The taupe would mix rather well with the mustard. That's nice. Mm. And of course, you're going to need some fabric to go with it as well, to line anything that you're making. So there's plenty you can mix that with. I teased you with, that's dark brown, isn't it? That's a really deep, rich dark brown. 
Bourneville, I'm thinking. Or I can't think of any of the Dodge or Terry's, I don't know. Um, at £6.99 again, your price there. Look at the colour of that bed. That goes really well with the taupe. Imagine, imagine my reversible bag, but not reversible, with that as the main part of the bag and then the handles and the top in that. That would be classy, wouldn't it? Or how about a little bit of the, the nautical with the indigo and the red? Maybe the white lining. So the indigo is a really inky, deep, rich colour. And look again at the softness and the malleability. I don't know if that's a word, but it just sounded good. And again, that's £6.99. Do you want to see the tiger fabric? Let me just fold that up neatly because I have to do that at some point anyway. We're going to have professional folders in the new studio. Mm, yeah, we're, yeah, we're having a professional folder. They're, they're in training at the moment. They have to be trained to fold as neatly as TV as Debbie Shaw. This is the tigers on black. It's tigers. I know when you just saw it, if you haven't seen this before, you think, where are those tigers? They are there, but they're hiding. So very well camouflaged tigers. You can see them there, can't you? Um, I think this looks really tropical. It looks, uh, it looks quite elegant as well. When you first look at it, you look at these flowers. They look like medallions or the leaves, aren't they? But when you look closely, you can just see they're circled by tigers. £5.99 for half a metre. And again, this is by the half meter so you can order in more lengths if you need it to this is one of those fabrics we sell out of all the time and it's if you think well that's on the shows a lot it's because you keep buying it and we keep ordering it then we sell it out and then we keep buying it and then you order it and we sell it out so lots of you must be making things with these already this is the red so same design which looks very different on red methinks and again, your eye is drawn immediately to the flowers and to the leaves. And then when you look closely, there they are, look. So that's Tiger Tiger on red for £5.99. Joy's got a question. Hi, Joy. She says, morning, morning, Joy. Um, she's got my panel covers for the sewing machine. Yes. Have I got a panel cover for an overlocker? No. There's a thought. I'll cover for an overlock. Overlockers are pretty much all the same size, aren't they? That would be quite easy to do. And they don't always come with covers. My overlocker, you know, you spend £850 on an overlocker and it's got a bit of plastic for a cover. That is a jolly good idea. That joy is on the list. I've got, my sister's best friend is called Joy, and I can remember, sorry, this is just taking me back a bit. Uh, when my husband first met her, my sister went, oh, and this is Joy. And Gary went, oh, I've jumped for her. Oh, well, I thought it was funny. <laughs> um, right, M mentioned my build the bag books earlier on. So we've got a couple for you here. And in fact, I think we've got them all on the website. This is my occasions bags book. These are books with a little bit of a difference because they're inside a folder to start with. So we've got a piece of elastic going around there. And that means that when you open the page up and you're on the project that you want to, you can use that as a bookmark, so that'll save your page. It is a proper standalone book, so this comes out. You can't take it out now because it's jammed in a little bit. And on this side, you have plastic templates. There are two of them in this book. So these are your patterns for at least 15 books. There are 15 different books in the bag, bags in the book. So when you take them out, um, You've got, they're all labelled as well. So, for instance, that's the edge of a clutch bag, but it could be a rounded edge to the clutch bag with a dart in there. That's a curved flap. That's a round flap. Um, so that's the round, that's the curve, that's a scalloped. You've got a heart shape there. That is purely because there was leftover plastic and it would have been a bit bare, so I thought we'll do some applique with that. And the hole at the bottom is the letterbox zip. And these are the side panels, so you can make three-dimensional bags or two-dimensional bags. The choice is yours. Uh, so there's no cutting patterns out of the book, there's no enlarging by 200% and there's no paper patterns to draw and cut around. You simply use those. Each one of the bags has 
the, um, the outline or highlight of the areas that you need to use to make each specific bag, but all of this is included and uh, sorry, instructed in the front of the, bag, uh, the book as well. And these are the kind of things that you can make. So that's the three-dimensional one with a curved flap. You can mix and match the flaps together. There's different techniques such as um, patchwork and piping and different materials to work with as well. Those are all listed. In fact, I do have some of these made from PU somewhere in here, I'm sure. So there's a cosmetic bag, it doesn't have to be a clutch bag, but all using the same templates. That's using silver um, PU, so you could use one of the colours that we have here. Um, oh, a triple, that's my favourite one, a triple pocket bag. It's got three pockets all joined together, three sections, but you don't see the join on the inside. That's it, look, so you just, well, you have to buy the book to see how to do it. So there's quilting techniques, a little zip purse there as well. That's an extra one, so just a different type of bag with a, with a handle on the top. And um, there's 15 in here, the 15 for, that I've come up with, but I'm sure when you get these home, you're going to find more designs to work with. So that's the clutch bag. And again, lots of different um, styles, patchwork, quilting. That's the pipes bag. Um, there's using bias binding. There's adding hardware. So there's lots of instructions in there, and they're really, really simple to use. And the recommended retail price for these is £15.99. I'm glad the author hasn't seen that. I think that's great. You take advantage of that low, low price. I can't sell them for that price on my website. Um, are we doing satchels next? Same idea. So this time, instead of the two templates, you have one. This took ages to do. To get hold of the type of plastic that will fold without cracking and still be transparent so you can fussy cut and place it on the fabric where you want it to be. This has one big template. So the, this is the, the first two books were occasion bags and tote bags and the second two books are the satchels and the backpack bags. But by having in effect two patterns that are joined together it means that you can make a really big bag. So the biggest satchel in here is actually twice the size of this. It's this on fold. So it's, it's really quite large and the smallest bag is about that big. About that big there. So just that little size there. So again, all of your instructions on there. No papers, no cutting out of the back of your um, book. And 15, that's the big one lot, 15 styles of bag at least. That's the little something extra. So you could use that as a shoulder pad on any bag. Um, that's the same pattern. Same patterns make all of these bags. Um, actually, I don't, I don't know if... Our buying team have realised that because of the ad advancements in the technology, and this book came out a year or so after this one, the recommended retail price of this one is £17.99. And it's signed. How'd you do that? £12.99 with a £5 saving and it's signed as well. Yours will be signed when you get it home. Oh. Oh. There's one more of my books in the show. It's not all about me. We've got some other books too. Um, this is So Brilliant Bags. So this time there's no patterns again. I'm, I'm not really a fan of paper patterns in books. I say that and probably one next year will come out with paper patterns in. But um, this one is... A little bit different again. So you're not limited. Oh, look, they're all mine. You're not limited to the amount, uh, to the size of the book or the amount of fabric that you're using. But there are 12 bags in here of different styles. But the idea with this book, so you've got all of these projects from a cosmetic bag to baby bags and duffel bags and everything. But the idea with this one is that I'm going to show you how to make a bag. So I'm kind of putting myself out of work somewhat. So how, let's take through all of those and techniques and zips and how to make bias binding, put bias binding on, making handles, making straps, making webbing, fitting eyelets, 
customizing projects. So this is the project in the book. That's what you can actually do with it if you make a bigger bag. And then it's your stitches, designing your own bags. So I'm taking you basically through how I design a bag. Um, this is one of the bags I bought from a charity shop and took it to pieces and used it as a pattern. See what I mean? Why did I do that? And then moving on to the projects, which are everything from beach bags to, you can use that as a baby bag, working with oil cloth, cosmetic bags, just something a little bit different. So that's the little twist bag that you can make into a big bag. So 12 projects all together, no templates to draw around, it's all about the, the measurement. But just smocking in there as well. Look. Must do some more of that. I must do some more of that because I've been commissioned to write a book about it. So I must, must do it at some point. <laughs> um, and then that's a drawstring tote. So it's a tote bag with a drawstring panel in the centre. So lots of different styles for you in there too. That one is £9.90 now, which is the price it should be. That's that. OK. We do have... We've got some others coming up for you as well. Oh, I just want to show you this. This is... Fantastic leather look. Uh, leather look webbing. I don't know why it's called webbing because it's not webbed. Um, I think that it is actually what the manufacturers call it, but I don't know why. It's, it's had back had it's had. I was going to say <laughs> it's had bangles. Back handles. It's an inch wide and there is a one metre. These are pre-cut, so you're not going to be able to order a two metre length. They come in one metre length. And it's not leather, it's a faux leather. Um, it's easy to sew through, it's easy to cut through, but it looks really professional, doesn't it? Let me just have a look at that dark blue. That's almost exactly the same colour. So, I mean, you can make straps with this. But look how professional that is. So that's going to be like a shop-bought bag. And actually, if you're making a different coloured bag, again, a little bit of hardware, thread that through a D-ring maybe. Again, it's an inch wide, which most D-rings are. So a little bit of metal. That is absolutely perfect. It could have been made from the same fabric. So I'm just, just had to look really closely. You've got to look closely. Um, so that's the navy. We've also got the tote. Or the tan, caramel, camel, caramel, coffee, cappuccino, camel, which goes nicely with the dark brown. That's a nice contrast to that one as well. And again, that's a metre and it's an inch wide and that's £2.99 for a metre. That's a good price. So a metre will give you one long shoulder strap. That's plenty long enough for one bag. And if you wanted to make shorter straps on a bag, you can easily make two decent sized shorter straps with your one metre, like so. You may need, well, you will need a denim needle to sew through that. Just FYI. It's £2.99, that's really good, isn't it? And I know you've just joined us and you're new to Sewing Street and you think, well, £2.99 is a really good price, Debbie Shaw. But um, my postage is £3.95. The postage is more than the strap. That's not such a good deal. It is because if you come back to us at any point throughout the day on the website, on the Jewellery Maker website um, or on the phone lines or if you see anything on the website that we haven't featured in the show and you want to order that as well, we don't charge you any more for postage. So if you came back later on, you know, I should have had that thread. I only need some pins. It's just you don't pay any extra postage throughout the whole of the day. It's just one PMP for the whole day. So that makes it really good value. Let's have a look at another book for you. Now, this is a bundle that you can make this bag with, and this bag is part of this book, and this book is part of the whole bundle with the fabric and the hardware to make it. So you've got your pattern and everything in here, but then you can make more bags than just the one, um, but you've got all the fabric to make that as well for £29.99. This was demoed by Cora Aikman on the 12th of June. So if you go back to our YouTube channel, um, then just have, have a flick through until you get to the 12th of June and you'll see it there. Um, if, you, if you haven't seen our YouTube channel before, go into YouTube, um, put Sewing Street into the search engine at the top and it will come up with a whole list of videos. One of the first ones will have a circular Sewing Street label. Click on that one. 
and then you'll have videos, messages, community, all that kind of thing. Click on videos and they'll come all in date order. So yesterday's show should be at the top. Today's show will probably be at the top later on today and so on and so forth. So just scroll all the way down. Or if you go to the search bar on the Sewing Street um, side uh, channel, then you can put in Cora Aikman and it should take you straight to that show. So it's really easy to find. Sewing Street Backpack. That should take you straight to this show as well. So you don't even have to remember 12th of June. So let's have a quick look at the book. And the different types of bags that you can make here. Well, oh, this is a thick book. So there's the introduction, how to use the book. Tools and equipment, always useful. Always useful to know because maybe there's things in here that you haven't seen before. I wonder what, what that is. Um, and those are all explained. And then you've got all of the different styles of bags from totes, shopping bags, smaller bags. You've got an, an iPad case or any other tablet case. That's quilted as well. The big duffel bag. Um, that would be great for the gym, wouldn't it? And I'd go to the gym. Circular shoulder bag. And more backpacks, occasions bag, an interview bag, day to evening, that's a nice one, it's a bit unusual, fold over clutch, that's similar to what I made earlier wasn't it, but mine had a, a clasp on it, that's all I like that with the pom-poms, <laughs> something a little bit different, spot the bag, There it is. Nice images. Toiletry bag, that's got components in it, so that's a nice idea. Drawstring bag, you can use those for storage. An oversized beach bag, I wish I needed that. Uh, oh, and these bags are nice. These bags are so expensive to buy, but you can make those in any fabric you like. So this is the bag that uh, Cara showed you how to make. So that's a retro backpack. There's a little zip on the inside there. I don't think you get the zip in the kit, do you? Um, we do have a zip separately on the website, but um, you might have to, well, you'll have to supply your own. Overnight bag. Oh, that's a good idea as well. So you've got just core techniques. How to use sliders and D-rings, that can always be a puzzle. Curved edges, and then templates in the back there as well. So then there's also some webbing. See, that's what I call webbing. Webbing for the straps. You've got a couple of sliders, which are these things, which means that your straps are adjustable. And do we have D-rings or do we supply our own D-rings? I think we should have, we should have D-rings as well. So two sliders, two D-rings, two straps, B fabric, lining fabric in the gray. And then you've got the mustard, um, canvas for the outside of the bag as well so you can see the way that they they go really well together actually don't they um the bee fabric on its own actually has been really really popular so it's quite nice to have that and to see how it works with uh with different with other different fabrics on the inside oh cara obviously keeps her her wadding in here £29.99 for the book, which has an RRP of £14.99. And then the webbing and the um, sliders and the D-rings, no zip, and the lining and the canvas. So that's bundle one. If the bees aren't floating your boat, how about going for bundle two? So you have the same one and the same straps, and this time we've got two colour pinks and then the canvas this time is in the the black with the flowers that's very elegant isn't it let me check so there's half a meter half a half a meter of each of those so you can choose whether you want to go for the like the, the contrast of the pockets on the outside in the dark pink or the contrast in the light pink. Personally, I go for the dark pink. I think that goes better. So I'd have pockets in the dark pink and then the lining in the light pink. But you can go whichever way round you wanted to. That's a gorgeous fabric, isn't it? 
really pretty they look like um, watercolor flowers and this is canvas again so it's the same weight as the canvas that you've been seeing on my shows every Sunday because I love the weight of it it's really nice really nice to work with and it gives a really strong durable heavy weight of bag as well so it's got interfacing in it let me just check if you need anything else no it hasn't no so you don't need any interfacing with that one you could add it if you've got it but you don't need to add your H640 to your order to make that one so again have a look at the 12th of June if you want to see the demonstration if, if you don't like any of the fabrics you just want the book we do have the book available for you on its own as well so how many have we got in here 18, 18 different styles of bags for a recommended retail price of £14.99 did I not say but our price is £11.99 and I like the way there's different styles of bags in here as well. So you can make everything from a cosmetic bag to a huge tote bag. All simply explained. Any templates that you need are in the back. And again, that's just £11.99. So just have a quick flip through some of the pictures of the bags that you're going to be able to make. Occasion bags, work bags, even an interview bag. Little pouches, big shoppers. Drawstring bags, a couple of different styles of those, overnight bags, gym bags, yoga bags, and lots of instructions in there as well, all for £11.99. So that's bundle number two, that's that one, that's that one. So I'm just having one of those days where I'm just knocking everything off. Um, right, this is another one of my favourite fabrics, that's heavy. We seem to have some new colours today. Right, we have we have the black. Um, this is only no three ninety like half a meter. How do we do that? So black is this one. I want to get to one of the colours before I show you the size, so you can really see it standing out. Um, this one is like a we call this light grey. It's a, it's a little bit. A little bit dark for a light grey, personally. But you can see the colour that you get there. That's again at £3.99. And it's wide. It's a... Um, oh, sorry, it's charcoal. It's not light grey at all, is it? Um, charcoal canvas. Let me show you this coral, because this is really wide. Well, they all are, but, you know. So it's 140 centimetres wide. It's the kind of quality, if you wanted to make a lightweight jacket, an unlined or lined jacket would be perfect. You could make skirts, you could make trousers, you could... Ooh, my label fell off, I keep doing that as well. Um, you could make a shirt to be quite heavy. If you're making aprons, this is going to be really good. If you're making bags, it is perfect cushions for the garden um, maybe bolsters for that un uncomfortable garden seat that you've got um do you know three pounds 99 teepees for the kids that's so affordable okay so was that coral your coral in that coral yep um this one it, it is the it is a canvas but it's the more natural look because it's got the little seeded bits in there. So we're calling this cream cotton, but it does have the flex of the seed pods, one of those really natural looks. It is canvas. It's not the Osnabrück fabric or a calico. This is proper canvas. It's just a very natural look to that one. And we've got white. A pair of trousers in that would be nice, wouldn't it? We're calling a crew this one. Um, yeah, a pair of, you know, you see linen trousers with really light, wide legs and drawstring waists. I'm thinking that kind of look for this one. And it's by the half metre, so if you ordered more than one, you know, if you needed a couple of metres to make a pair of trousers, then you'll get a couple of metres all in one piece. This is pretty, oh, this is the one that's in the book. Um, this is the fuchsia. It's soft enough to make linings for bags as well. So don't think canvas as in really heavy canvas that you'd put into a frame. This is more of a linen weight to it. But it's an awful lot more affordable. Favourite colours. I've got a couple of favourite colours in this one. And they're both here, which I'm really pleased about. This is the lavender. So it's a lovely deep shade of lavender. And then the pale grey. Has that sold out? That's gone. That was quick. We have navy. And the mustard. 
that's my other favourite colour. And I think those two go really well together. So ochre we're calling that one, not mustard. And then this one is the purple. Purple. Um, bright red. Proper tomato pillar box red, that one. And then finally is the teal. At three ninety nine for half a metre. You, you pay more than that for a lot of cottons. And this is cotton, but it's a heavy weight of cotton, remember. You're going to be really pleased when you get this home. I've, I use this um, cotton canvas for so many of my projects at the moment. You can use it with different weights of fabric as well. So if you, like, like for instance, in the kit where we've got the B cotton, which is um, a quilting weight cotton, and you've got your canvas, which is heavier, they still go together really well. You don't have to use the same weight of fabric. And if you do have a very fine cotton that you want to use with it, just put a little bit of interfacing on the back to give it a bit more sturdiness when you're using them together. But those are gorgeous fabrics. You'll be absolutely over the moon. And I want to see pictures of what you've been making as well. Or if you've got any ideas, maybe you're, you know, we come up, we're trying to come up with as much inspiration as we can at Sewing Street. But if you have something at home and think, well, yeah, you haven't made what I've made, let's have a look. Let's see what you've been making with yours. Love to see. So dressmaking, homewares, cushion covers, absolutely perfect. Bag making, even more perfect. Kitchen wares, oven gloves, are absolutely fantastic fabric. You, you won't be disappointed with that one, I am sure. Um, right, so that one's gone. Our electric scissors have been very popular this morning. We, we, were, we were down to one. I did say in the um, eight o'clock show this morning when we launched these, we, I, I said well, some lucky person will have the last pair. Well, that's gone now. So we shouldn't really have them here, should we? But we've managed to get hold of some more for you. Um, but only a limited number. We don't have, you know, and just uh, thousands of them at all. We do have a limited number of scissors that are available for you. If you weren't watching the 8.30 show this morning, we've got electric scissors. These are such a great quality. They're like something that you'd have in your toolbox. They're, a they're not heavy, but they're a really good sturdy weight. I've used a few different brands before over the years. I haven't found a pair that will cut through as much as these will without struggling. This morning, I was cutting through carpet. I have no reason to cut through carpet. I just thought, I'm going to challenge these scissors and see you know, the ultimate as to what they can cut. But they can cut through fabrics up to eight millimetre in length. And what I also did, which I think I've kept somewhere, was cut out a pattern with it. Didn't keep it, wasn't expecting to come back to these. We thought once it sold out, that was it, can't get any more. See, and I've thrown that away. But let me show you, have I got any patterns at all? I haven't got that, I've got paper, I've got plastic, I've got paper and cork and I've got denim and I've got floaty fabrics and that and I've got bits of leather and I've got plastic, but have I got a pattern? No. But I'll show you anyway. If you have a paper pattern and you've got curved, because I was thinking, first of all, electric scissors, really quick, big pieces of fabric, really heavy pieces of upholstery fabric, that's going to be great. But I'll, I'll save my scissors and my rotary cutter for when I want something a little more intricate. And I'm really surprised after, after trying these out how intricate you can be. You don't have to cut quickly. You can cut slowly. You've got so many cuts per second. You get a really clean cut with minimal of fraying. You don't get any snagging. They're safe to use as well because the cutting area is only, if I just show you that way, the cutting bit is only right in the middle there. They don't cut at the ends, so if you happen to get your finger in the way, I'm not going to do it because it vibrates and it doesn't feel very nice, but it doesn't cut because, look, it's only cutting right into the centre point. Um, it'll cut up to 8 millimetres as long as you can get it to touch that point. These are a tungsten blade. They are really, really strong and they're very durable and they're very long-lasting. The ones that I've used previously had an alloy blade, which just weren't they weren't durable enough and they tended to blunt. There are two blades in the box. 
One of them's sharp and one of them's blunt. I wouldn't say the blunt is blunt, to be honest, but the sharp one is the A blade, and that's meant to use with thicker or more hard hard wearing fabrics. But again, I'm not using these for speed at the moment, I'm using them for ease. Because one thing I'm not doing is this with a pair of scissors. I'm doing that with a button. And it's left or right-handed, and they're really, really simple. You'll have the rechargeable battery. When you run out of charge, and you thought, I just want to carry on, I don't want to stop, you do have the mains lead as well, so you can be charging your battery at the same time as you're using your scissors with the mains lead. And again, there's two blades on there which are easy to interchange if you wanted to. You'll probably find that you leave the same one on all the time, to be honest. But all of these bits and bobs that I was chopping up this morning, just to show bag base, Plastic mesh bag base. Really, really simple. I was cutting through denim. I use a lot of denim because I like to upcycle. But it can be a bit of a problem to chop through those thick seams. With my hands it can. Let's do the very thick one. That wasn't a challenge, was it? On this seam, on a pair of jeans, you will have six layers of denim. That, for me, is a struggle with a pair of scissors. These are amazing scissors, we've got them on the website. So I can cut to here, and then I'd really have to cut to get through there. And you saw with the electric ones how they just glide through. So if I'm doing a lot of cutting with heavy fabrics, that's going to be a lot of strain on my hands. I don't have the best, I don't have the healthiest of knuckles these days. It happens, it's hereditary, isn't it? My mum was like that. That's what stopped her sewing eventually, which is a real shame. So I'm, do, I'm eating as many avocados as I can, because it seems to be working. Um, if you're a card maker, if you're a paper crafter, you can cut through paper, you can cut through cardboard, you can cut through mood board, you can cut through foam board, you can cut through felts, um, you can cut up your cardboard boxes, you can cut up your credit... No, don't cut up your credit cards, only the out-of-date ones, because we want you to use those. <laughs> but they're just... They're, it's the quality for me, and... You know, at Sewing Street, the one thing that I, can, I love about when you when you look at any of our sewing machines, you get the best quality from the biggest names. We don't sell cheap, and these certainly aren't. In quality is what I'm talking about. We try to bring you the best of the quality of anything that we bring you, and these are strong and durable and quick and long-lasting. If you are just cutting big sheets of fabric, then there's a big sheet of fabric. I haven't got a big sheet. Of... I wasn't prepared for this. We'd sold out. That's not very big, but and you do want to be quick. Whoops, snagged it. Oh, there you go. And it you don't you're not lifting up the fabric from the end. And you can cut really quickly. You can cut really accurately. You can cut in curves. You can follow patterns. And you can do that for eight hours at a time without having to recharge. Do you know, if I've got a lot of fabric to cut up and it was going to take me out eight hours to cut it, maybe you're um, selling things that you make or you're making up kits or you're in a fabric store or you've got a fabric web shop and you've got lots and lots of fabric to cut, eight hours of that. Ooh, you can imagine. Actually... If it does get a bit strenuous, should we do it? Should we cut things for the next eight hours? I'm right-handed, I can't cut with my left hand. Oh, that's easy. I'm not as confident with my left hand, but if my right hand gets a little bit tired by pressing a button, I can use my left hand. This is Craftex. It's, um, it's a paper that's been treated to act like leather. It's really, really tough. And as it is paper, it will blunt your scissors eventually. I haven't even woken these up yet. I haven't got my carpet bit. I've got some cardboard. So if you're cutting up boxes, maybe you want to... Cardboard... Oh, that's taken me back. We used to... <laughs> We used to make uh, Indian headdresses out of these when I was little and stick feathers in the holes down the front. Have you ever done that? And paint them with zigzags and paint the feathers. That's... I became higher waffle for a second then. So many other things take you back, isn't it? <laughs> 
scissors. Scissors are okay, that's a bit tough, but when you get to the bit where the handle is, that's gone all, all bent now, and that actually is quite, quite tough on the hands. I wasn't faking that, see how quickly I can do it. There, so, don't have to do that anymore. Webbing. That's a doddle. So trim those off. Leather handles. I was saying earlier on, I do quite a lot of upcycling. That's another book. <laughs> My gosh, I'm going to have to, yeah. So eco-friendly. That's going to come up later on in the year. Um, but I, I tend to go to um, charity shops and buy bags a lot because I like the hardware on them because it's things that you can't normally buy. That's leather. I'm not a fan, but, you know, to cut through that. Doable. A little bit tough. How much easier was that? It's almost like you point this at it and it just cuts through. So I could probably cut that with scissors once or twice. I wouldn't do this normally. They're absolutely useless. But it's these hooks that I want off there, so I can simply cut those off. What else have I got that I haven't thrown away? Um, I've got paper. Oh, paper's easy, isn't it? Was it 16 pieces of paper I cut through in one go earlier on? Doggle. Remember, you can be really precise. It's not all about the speed. It's the quality of the cut and the accuracy. I can trim that right down there. So again, it's not going to replace your scissors entirely, but for the most part it can do. I couldn't find any... I don't do a lot of paper crafting, but I do seem to have a lot of paper crafting stuff. And this is a little bit thicker than what you make templates with. So this is like... You can hear how thick that is. So if I'm bag, bag bases again, that, oh, that, now I've done, made it too small for a bag base now, haven't I? So I could have used that, what a waste. <laughs> but pattern pieces, if you're making templates, um, if you're making stencils, maybe you're doing a bit of home decor, and you can again cut different shapes out of it. Have a play with it when you first get it home. You'll find, or oh, I found, yeah, don't, you're all going to look like Robinson Crusoe, aren't you? Um, this, I was saying earlier, is why I love it. I love this fabric, it's a viscose, and it's one of those popcorn type fabrics, so it's got a lovely texture, it's lightweight, it's gorgeous to wear, and it can be a devil to cut in a straight line because it shifts. So it's got quite a loose weave, and you think you're cutting in a straight line, and then you end up with a curve. But with this, it's almost like you're just pointing at where you want it to cut. And it just slides through. It's barely lifting the fabric. If you're cutting out shapes as well, maybe I'm cutting out a, an armhole. Take your time with it. Follow your pattern. If I was using a rotor cutter, there's no way I'd be bringing that towards me. So that's a miniature pattern for a sleeve. Um, but what I have found is that if you angle it slightly, so you can cut flat. If I lift it up slightly, I seem to get a better cut. So just have a practice on a scrap piece of fabric first. But see how accurate you can actually be with this. So if I'm cutting out detailing on a body, or around a bust line, or if I've got... Um, you know, curves to cut out on necklines and things like that, then it's, it's... When I first saw them, I thought, yep, great, heavy-duty fabric, really thick layers, cutting curtains and, and denims and things like that, and really tough fabrics, that's going to be easier than doing this. But actually, on the finest of fabrics, that's why I'd buy them that for this, because they can be, they can be a, a nightmare to actually try and cut in, um, cut in straight lines. I think I'm out of stuff to cut... Do you see what I've got down is there's just bits of fabric all over the place.
Not going to waste it. Probably will, to be honest. Um, another thing to mention about them really quickly, they have rounded blades. Um, the, if you catch your finger on that, I'm not going to do it because it vibrates and I don't like the feeling of it. I have tried it and I'm not doing it again, but it doesn't cut because the cutting point is only in the centre there. So if you do happen to come up to your finger, it's not going to cut because you only cut from here. So the ends of the blade never actually touch. So if you really try, you could trim your fingernails. If you really tried to force something in there, then it would cut, obviously, but that's the safety feature. That is, and that's nice and rounded at the end as well. Um, recommended that you take this bit off while you're doing anything like plugging into the other charger or recharging them. Do you know, <laughs> I didn't this morning. I wasn't very good at packing it all back into the box after I brought them in this morning. So I, I, I put all the... All the, all the other bits in the box, and I just put that in my bag. And I went in my bag this morning, and I just said, Whoa! <laughs> so, so I always take, doesn't do any damage, <laughs> but to, just take the end of that off when you put it away. In fact, just put it on to recharge, and that's fine. It's a really good, solid quality, though. That's the, that's the thing I really want to put across to you. It's a really quality tool for the whole family to use, not just for your sewing. Um, but we only have a limited quality, quality, quantity. We sold out of everything that we had at Half Estate this morning in the show. We've got a few more back for you, but only a few. We don't have many of those. So if you want to have a go, if you want to order them, then do feel free. Um, just a quick reminder of a brilliant Bax book. Oh, we've only got eight of these left now. Oh, OK. Um, Twelve bags, but lots of instructions on how to design your own bag. Um, so different types of bags as well, from small clutch bags all the way through to a huge tote bag, one on the cover actually, that you could use as a, a baby bag as well. And that's only £9.99 and pence is your price. And I'll just flick through that really quickly so you get an idea of what's actually inside. As many photos as I can possibly squeeze in there. No jargon, no abbreviations. If I want to say right sides together, I will write right sides together, not RST, because it always takes a few seconds to figure out what abbreviations mean, so I don't use them. Um, and lots of simple instructions for you there too. That's £9.99. We're almost out of time, aren't we? Shall have a look what's coming up tomorrow? At 8 o'clock in the morning, we have fabrics and sewing inspiration. At 9 o'clock, stripology rulers and tools, sewing street kits at 10 o'clock in the morning. And then we move on to repeat. So we've got three live hours every day at the moment. And at 11 o'clock, we have a repeat of Sensational Quilts for Scrap Lovers book. And 11.30, oh, it's the electric scissors. I hope we've got some back. And at 12 o'clock is the reversible bag show that we had for you this morning. I hope we've got enough stock for that because we sold out of two of them, haven't we? Oh, Yvonne's messaged a quick question. Hi, Yvonne. Um, have I tried the scissors on Jersey? Oh, no. Gosh, why didn't I try on Jersey? Bear with me. Have we got Jersey? Have we got Jersey? Have we got Jersey? That is, oh, the iron's still on. Um, Jersey fabric, Jersey fabric. Fabric, Jersey fabric, Jersey fabric. Jersey fabric. Oh. The back of the faux leather is Jersey. <laughs> really run, really run, really run. That's not Jersey. It's going to be stretchy. Be stretchy. Stretchy fabric. Stretchy knit of fabric. Maureen would like an overlocker. Oh, an overlocker cover. So obviously she's already got an overlocker. Right, let me just get that. We've got this back here, you see, because we don't throw scraps away. Jersey, 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 Jersey. I've got two minutes to find you some Jersey. We've got felt. Don't know what that is. We've got faux leathers. Where we am still here. We have no jersey. The back of this is knitted. It won't be a problem on jersey whatsoever. That's it's not a stretcher's jersey, but it is a stretch fabric, and that's worked absolutely fine. We've not got any jersey in there. Let's have some jersey somewhere. I'm saying yes, it will easily cut through jersey because I've cut through every other type of fabric you can think of from chiffon to carpet and it's cut through everything. So I don't see any reason why it wouldn't cut through jersey as well. Fancy not having jersey. 
I shall see you again on Sunday morning and on Monday morning. If you've still got the scissors, I shall bring Jersey in from home and we shall, I'm still looking for Jersey and we shall cut Jersey. Are you wearing a T-shirt, Joe? Got a sweatshirt on? You got a tea? Can I cut it up? No. No? Oh, OK. <laughs> he did actually come out of the gallery. I think he was about to volunteer his T-shirt. <laughs> Um, you can order, of course, after the end of the hour. We're going to be here for the next two hours with some more sewing for you, albeit not live. So if you're still in the mood from sewing, then do stay around with us for the next couple of hours. Check out the baskets uh, for anything that you're ordering on the website on sewingstreet.com. And I shall see you again bright and early at 8 o'clock on Sunday morning. Enjoy the rest of your week. Bye-bye.